Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Group Up Podcast. We are here for the great Malga debate. Malga is finally upon us, terrorizing some people's ranked games. And I brought with me three, I guess as much as we can be right now, experts on the hero, as all three of these guys have successfully completed unranked GMs on Malga. So uh, let's introduce my panel. In the bottom right is my man, Yidl. Yidl, what's up? Yo, what up? Happy to be here. Nice to have you back again. I like the background. I like the little plushies you got going back there. Yeah, I'm a Pokemon fan. Got a Hammond back there too. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah, there you go. Good. Nice, nice. Well, we can we can mention a little bit of Hammond earlier as well because I, I I actually you know I got some hot takes. I think I think he's better than people think he is, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, in the bottom left is my man Boger. Boger, what's up? I'm chilling. I've been grinding Malga. Life's great. Awesome. Yeah, Boger, you currently hit 10 now, right? Top 10 on uh, Malga only. 10. Yeah, I, I got 10 wins in a row, then I lost three games in a row, and then I was like, screw this, I'm going to go play Lucio. Too many games. But uh, yeah, I did get top 10 today. That's fair, that's fair. And someone who went, you went 31 to 1, is that correct, Samir, on your unranked GM playing Malga? So, Welcome to the podcast. So, I, th I, I got to GM... And I was 35 and one. And the only game I lost was I had a DPS only Moira duoed with their uh, Mercy on my team. And that Moira did not heal anyone else the entire game. And we lost by one fight. They had 3,000 healing in 10 minutes. That was the only game I lost. So what it rank? Was, uh, what rank? It was Diamond, I think. Yeah. I, th I think it was um, Diamond. Elo Hell. That's Ilo a crazy. Elo Hell is real, guys. Elo Hell is real. So was sad. the Mercy pocketing the Moira the whole time, or what was that? Yeah, it, pretty much. Yeah. Oh, that's awful. So it was not, and we almost won the game too. But it was, it was a lot. I'd like to, uh, SVB, that we got a, a very important apology to make here. I, I have changed my background for today's show for the first time. Oh yes. Ever. I just ever. I, it didn't clock me. There's no Li Jiang Tower anymore. But, you no. Know, well, it's. I could turn it on, except I can't stream like the call so I, i've never streamed like the group up except because it, i can't get everybody's faces as well as mine with my with my background but today we're trying something new so if i get flamed i'm sorry but Me, you uh, guys tell me should i bring it back or, or what, what's the deal here we'll see yeah i feel like tradition is ruined like some without tradition the Lee Jang. Ruined as well <laughs> yeah. yeah without the Lee Jang, how can we how can we do this but all right we'll figure it out we'll figure it out all right fellas so we're here, I've assembled here to discuss Malga, amongst some other things that we'll talk about, you know, the Winter Wonderland and the season and a whole bunch of other things that are currently taking place in Overwatch. Maybe we'll get to the whole support OP beef as well that's always <laughs> digging up under the surface. <laughs> but um, first, let's talk about our newest hero. Now, all three of you, like I said, are, have been embarking on some Malga one-tricking. And I have heard on the grapevine, and I've heard it been said, and I'm feeling this way a little bit myself, that... Malga might be the strongest hero on launch that Overwatch has ever released, at least in Overwatch 2, and might even be a little bit pay to win. So I'm going to open this up with Ashley Samito. Sam, start us off, because I know you are uh, you were DMing me about this. You think that Malga might just be a little bit pay to win. So big picture thoughts on Malga, uh, and then we'll get into the, to the nitty gritty. So in, in terms of, I, I've seen people try to say that like he's he's so good he's as good as launch brig he's not as good as launch brig, uh, I I think that's a bit of a, an exaggeration. Um, launch brig was so insane that it's I like he's good he might be the second best, he might be the second best behind but it's a close between him and launch sigma in my opinion launch sigma was insane maybe, maybe launch carry too but I I think launch sigma do you guys would you all agree with that statement that it's like close there with launch sigma but. Maybe that's number two. I, I can't think. I don't. Think I don't really know. remember how broken Sigma was. I uh, I remember him, people were rolling around with Sigma everywhere, like Malga. But I'm not sure. Because like, didn't he come yeah. out during Goat's meta? Or... He came out right when Roll Q came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just added him in for Roll Q. I remember he had like 1600 shield, and you could flick it instantly. Like you, there wasn't the was cooldown. Or something. It was. It was around. It was crazy. And then was, yeah. you could grasp the hook and you can throw a rock across the map for like a five second <laughs> CC. Oh, and Flux yeah. wasn't interruptible. Like, Flux wasn't interruptible. You remember? Oh, like, yeah, you, you could, could interrupt him, Flux. And yeah. they would still oh. get slammed down. That was funny. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm I, like compared to like traditional heroes, I, I he's not touching Brig and, I, and he probably wouldn't touch Sigma either, but he was close. Um, mm. 
he's I, I've seen a lot of people complain about his design. I actually don't think his design is the problem. I, I think that that's kind of what you expect from a tank hero. I think that the format doesn't allow him to have a lot of depth in the mirrors, and the mirror is incredibly brainless. It's just, it, it's like you sit there and really right now, it's just shoot their tank. Like you don't want to get caught shooting squishies too much because you'll stop healing and stop generating shields. Um, and if you have a Kiri on your team, that's all you need. Really, that's it. It's you get a Mogan Akiri and you can win almost any game. Um, but I, I, I've enjoyed playing the character. Um, I do think it's a little pay to win in that. Have we seen a meta where people are leaving games to buy battle passes in comp? In <laughs> like, like you know, it's 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 pretty insane. And another thing I want to bring up is. Oh my goodness. Okay, sorry. I just got All right. Well, let's let's just let's pause there. You 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 hold yeah. on to that thought. And yeah, let me let me yeah. get the big picture thoughts from my other guests here first. Boger, just sort of big picture, Malga. You know, Samito alluded to a few things there where like maybe he's as strong as uh, one of the top three maybe releases of heroes we've ever gotten. How do you rate him, especially someone who suffered with perhaps the worst hero on launch in Overwatch with Life Weaver? So you've gotten quite the contrast. Malga is a little bit overcooked. Like, it, I've never seen it, such a car. It's like Bastion Ballantyne because you just kill every tank in a 1v1 every single time and i've never seen because everyone keeps swapping tanks to counter a specific pick but i've never seen people struggle to swap so much like i play malga and if the enemy team doesn't go malga they just lose a lot of the games like the tank tries winston he gets cooked like he tries reinhardt he gets cooked he goes diva like diva might make you struggle a bit but not really because after matrix is done that's it and He's like so oppressive. And as Samito said, you shouldn't be shooting squishies because then you don't heal. I feel like if you just focus the enemy tank, you just kill him instantly. Like Cloudy pins in, I just run into him and I just shoot him in the face. And I can't die because I heal so much. Plus I get pocketed and he dies instantly. People die so fast. And not to mention, he's the only tank I feel like that you can face to face like shoot a bastion and he you actually win. heals more like if the enemy team goes bastion it's a Great. net benefit for the Mauga because like he heals from the bastion it's like a second tank it's nuts uh I think the character is a little bit overtuned I think um I think he needs some nerves for sure and especially with the Kiriko he's really strong because Ana like, the only p things there's no DPS that can counter Malga I feel like and there's no tank that can counter Malga only supports can counter Malga and if you bait out the sleep and nade you're you're good to go if you have a Kiriko and you just Suzu down you're good to go like, like I it's a crazy tank right now I, I went 10 in zero today I rode Cloudy so many games he couldn't do anything on Reinhardt I played against MO7. MO7 kept swapping because, you know, we just Suzu the nades and stuff. So the character is a little bit uh, really strong. I did struggle when I started getting into those step, top 10 lobbies because yeah. people were like, the, the rank 1 players, they were playing like Kirko, Lucio, Soldier Tracer, Zarya. And I couldn't heal from anything and I was just dying. But, you know, I feel like you shouldn't be winning every game on Malga. Obviously, you're going to struggle against the best of the best. But... I feel like he's a huge pop stomper right now. Like crazy. Just insta win free elo. Mm. A lot of thoughts to, to vibe off there, Yidl. But yeah, just starting with the big picture, the relative strength of Malga on launch. What do you what do you feel about what's been said so far? I think he's he's definitely on one of the stronger sides. I, I'd say that there's definitely an argument for him being the most uh pay to win. But I think launch Kiriko was stronger. Just the difference is she's a support. And not a tank and tanks just more impact let's be real here um but besides that like i feel like i don't think Mauga's uncounterable per se like you can really like i, I think diva or or um sigma like you give them an ana and then all of a sudden it's a little bit hard for Mauga to heal off of anything between the matrixes the shields and all that like even if he has a cleanse of his own like it's hard to do anything um i think he's very like comp reliant in that sense if he's getting countered but uh overall i think he's an okay hero um there's definitely things to be said about like him shooting tanks all the time i think that's very boring gameplay and i like the part of his kit where you light people on fire and you know you just poke them out with that i think that's nice um but yeah overall i think his damage also is it's a little bit strong but i think it's at a good spot now before it was like you literally could just shoot tanks the entire time and just erase them but now there's a bit more room 
for the matchup, I think, and a lot of times. Yeah, you know, I think that's I think I got most of it. Did I miss something? No, it sounds good. Sam's got his hands up. Sam, what do you want to what do you want to add to that? I just I just want to piggyback a little bit about uh off what both of them said. One, I think it's hilarious. Anytime anybody's picked bash it against me, it's been so free because his hitbox is so big that you constantly have him ignited, which is free crit and shield. Boger hit on this as well. The only games that I struggled, and this is why he's such a good pub stomper hero, were the games where they played things that were hard to shoot or they minimized or they 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 took down my uptime on my guns, right? What well, those games where it, it's kind of, it's kind of like when people were trying to figure out how to play against Doomfist and Overwatch 1 and DPS Doom or whatever and everyone's like, "Oh, well, let's go cast and all these stuns." Except you're clumping up and playing heroes that he can dive on. If you want to beat Malga, it's very similar. It's like sometimes the best thing to do is pick the Echo Mercy or Pick things that are hard to hit, like Soge, Tracer, Lucio, Kiri, and Zarya, or Queen is another one I struggle with because she's so vertical that your uh, left and right click can't, like, proc shields or healing off of her. If you want to beat Malga, you need to avoid the duel. It's kind of what Frito talked about SVB yesterday. Those were the only times that I really struggled. And, if again, if you get the Kiriko, you just have to play a lot slower. So I think if they wanted to change him and tune him down maybe reduce the amount of healing he can get, but I don't think you should change the ignite chance. I think letting him ignite squishies is super, super important. Just reduce the reward it gives you because it's that's how you expand on the game. That's what people really complained about was the gameplay. We would sit there and spam the tank. If they allowed it to be a little bit easier to ignite squishies, you'd see less of that, but it's right now with how it is, you just have to shoot the tanks and you just overwhelm everything. So there's, there's a few strands here that we'll, we'll isolate each of them and we'll, we'll go through each of them. One will just be the general idea of like where does Malga's strength come from and what is it that makes him so strong, what might be a counter. We'll talk about potential balance changes as well. Like, okay, well, if we all relatively agree that maybe he's a little bit overtuned, how do we change that? You already alluded to a little bit, Samido. And then we'll again come to this bigger picture discussion of like what heroes should be like when they launch. So let's just start with this the idea of like Malga being the shredder. Boger, I mean how accessible do you think Malga is going to be for the vast majority of the rank experience? Because this also this also happens, it, it's often a disconnect between when players like yourself, who are some of the best players in the world, are playing heroes and you guys get the max amount of the hero. And it's it's a whole different world for your normal player in gold and plat. And you said when you were you're doing your, your Lucio, you were in like a lower elo, you weren't really seeing people run Malga. Now that could just be because people didn't buy the battle pass yet or haven't unlocked him yet. But how do you see Malga affecting like the bigger picture of Overwatch, the game in Overwatch ranked, at least outside of like top 500? I think Malga can be very brain dead most of the times, but I think there's a lot of things you can do on him that are really fun and interesting. Like his shift, you can climb up stuff. It's really funny. Like if you're playing uh, Junker Town, you can go from high ground to high ground, hop around like Winston is... And most people, I feel like lower people, lower ranked people don't know that. And then uh, you can dodge Malga ult with your shift. There's a lot of things I think lower ranked players don't know that can they can uh, min max on this character to really boost your win rate. You can actually place your ult and press shift at the same time inside your ult if you time it correctly. Uh, people also, I've seen so many Malga players in, uh, when I was lower ranked, even in higher rank, that shoot both guns at the same time from long range which means you can't, like, hit anything because your spread is so wide. So I feel like the character can be very brain dead a lot of the time, but I think the reason, one of the few reasons we don't see him in lower elos because not everyone has the battle pass. Second of all, not everyone really cares about, you know, uh, winning every game. They just want to play their game. And third of all, I think people struggle with Malga because um, they don't, first... They don't really understand some of the concepts. Like they try to kill squishies. Every time I've tried to rush into the back line against an Ana or whatever, I just die instantly. Like it's just insta dead, you know? But if I shoot the tank, I never die. You know, just you just never die. So people misunderstand how to play Malga. They play too aggro. They don't know how to use his abilities. His ult, I love his ult. I think his ult is awesome. I love his ult so much. It's so fun. Because you can do so many things with it. Uh, you can C9 the enemy team. You can uh, catch the Valking Mercy and kill her. Like, 100% success rate. Like, it's so easy to do that. <laughs> like, you can you can go and solo the tank. And, like, it's like a Winston bubble. They can't kill him anymore and just kill the tank. There's so many split, things you, you split, can do. You can split Trank. I, you can split Trank, split yeah. Trank in, there were two cage fights, like, over 
were together and I split the trank on the right side and then fought the mog on the left. It was crazy. I really, I really like a lot. Of, one thing, like, even though he's a little bit OP, when I play Mauga, I get reminded of playing tank back in Overwatch 1. Like, I don't know, when it was actually kind of fun. Because now it's not fun to play tank. And why is that? Because back in the day, you had a second tank to peel for you, and you can do a lot, and you can think a lot, and there's a lot of little things I could do. Like, Mauga gameplay, as I said, you can't just sit around and just shoot the enemy tank. But once you get into higher lo elo lobbies, you need to do some more funky stuff to win. And uh, I think it's fun because I feel like I have control of the game. Like, I, I, I feel like I, if I lose the game, it's my fault. Obviously, it's because the character is really OP, but uh, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll let Sam chime in and yeah. then I want to talk to Yidl about something. Go ahead, Sam. Yeah, yeah. I just took a quick line and go to Yidl. Um, well, that's because, you know, ironically, guys, if you think about it, Mwalga right now is what Tank was promised to be in Overwatch 2. Now, they did it by buffing him like he's really really strong but like right now if you are playing Walga, you are the superhero that was promised and i think that's why it that's why it felt so good to play as him that being said if you're playing against it as a different tank it probably wasn't as fun but that's i think that's the feeling and i i, I agree with that if, as the we, only I thing i want to say is that i'm so happy that i'm the one playing Malga and not the one that uh people are playing Malga against you know like i out like playing against winston on Malga. Is like Winston jumps and he dies instantly. Like I wait for his primal or press ult, he dies instantly. It, is so, it looks so not fun. Like he's too dominating, or I guess. He or Doomfist. So or Bo. Hard. Bo like Bo eats so much because he's so large. Like even though he has one thousand two hundred HP, you just kill him instantly. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm 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 actually impressed that Samuel laid off the six v six. I thought he was gonna. I thought that's where that was going. I thought the six v six propaganda we'll wait, we'll was, wait till later. was coming. We'll I'm sure. I'm sure we'll eventually get into that area. But I mean, and that is a valid discussion. We're we're talking about a tank, so it does. I think it will be relevant to maybe bring that up at some point, Sam. But yeah, but we're talking so, about design uh, right now, so it's not so we'll hold that. We'll hold on to that. But right now, I want to I want to head over to Yidl. Hello, guys. SCP here, and the Goop Up Podcast is back. And I'd like to take just thirty seconds of your time to talk to you about two quick things. Firstly, Patreon. If you enjoy the content, then please do consider supporting directly because Patreon takes only about 10% of the money you give, where YouTube and Twitch take 40 and 50% respectively. So if you'd like to support the podcast, then that is the best way to do so. Secondly, if you're someone who enjoys video essays or detailed analysis of movies, TV, or anime, then please do check out my second channel, The Soak, where I'll be making videos about those kind of topics much more frequently and where a lot of my attention will go beyond just Overwatch. It would mean the absolute world to me if you guys would check it out, but that's it for now. Let's head back to the discussion. See, a, a couple interesting things said there. And I know people will hear things like, well, oh, you like being OP, huh? Like, that's so that's what it is. Or you, you guys are mad when support was OP, but now tanks OP. You guys are happy. Another thing, interesting thing that you said, Yidl, earlier, where it's like, well, the tank is just more impactful, right? So it's like, it's like launch Kiriko maybe was more broken, but tank is like the impact role. So now that yeah. Malga is this strong, like it's kind of defining... You actually made a great video about, you know, how to approach picking in Overwatch. And, you you know, you spoke about, like, well, no Overwatch 2, actually, you kind of want to go off what your support comp is running, right? If your support comp is doing mm. this, you kind of want to base your tank off of that. So I want you to, like, kind of tell me if you... Well, firstly, do you still agree with that? Because that was a while back. And if so, mm. how does Malga fit into that? Because what I'm getting is that Malga kind of breaks that mold. And he just... He defines what everyone else should pick. So is that is that good? Is that bad? Is that something you agree with? So give me your thoughts. I think very specifically in like the Malga v Malga matchup, it will definitely come down to like which team has the better support lineup. Like if if I have Mercy Moira versus uh, Kiriana, it's going to be an uphill battle to say the least uh, between just healing, getting anti, etc. Um, and those ults are just so good. Kitsune and Nano, great rotation. Um, but yeah, I still think that like the support comp is very important for like deciding what you do as tank because how I see it is like what you can do as a tank depends on what your support lineup is. So if, for example, again, like if we have the Ana uh, Kiri and they're playing the the shitty Moria Mercy, then I can hold W a lot harder or maybe like play more of a poke style, more of a brawl style, like if we're Lucio Moira instead. So I still think that holds true. Um, one thing I did want to say, though, about the ult earlier is I do kind of feel like the ult is just just a little bit too strong, his cage fight. Because it's just a little bit goofy that, like, if you ult somebody, 
like like a doomfist for example the doomfist can't punch he can't really fight back all he can do is just block i'm i'm kind of a i'm kind of on the page of i think they should be able to use their mobility inside the cage fight i don't know what you guys think about that is that a hot take to leave yeah not be able to leave i can't I, agree with that i think the best way that they could balance maga going forward is not to necessarily nerf him but be open up some opportunity for other people to play into him in his denial abilities like like the cage fight where like doom maybe can punch but he can't punch out right or ryan can pin and he just collides on the wall or on the shield and like maybe the shield gets treated kind of like a may wall i guess and not like a barrier or like a well i don't know i but i think i don't think that would be a bad approach if they don't want to accidentally nuke him kind of like what happened last week where he kind of got nuked um but mm. yeah I, I can agree with that like doom is just helpless like it's embarrassing <laughs> like he just he just he doom instantly turns into a mosquito and i was just like you're just, you're just useless get you're done that last patch was crazy prior to the to the buffs that he just got like i feel like that put him from one of the worst tanks to all of a sudden a top tank like mm. it was so, crazy night and day to me well that's an interesting thing to investigate i want boger's thoughts on this first and i get the others but like mm. how is it that we went from People going well. Actually, you've, these this nerf that you give him, this is like this hero's dead. Like you know, you're we're, this is unplayable. And now we're kind of saying he's like giga busted, maybe like the most busted tank we've seen in a long time. So like, how how does that occur? And is there a way to find a middle ground? So I want to go to you, Boger, first. Like, why is that? Why has that happened? I think um, first we should stop judging characters by quick play and practice range. I think it's really funny every time we do it because people are like, this character is broken. No, this character is not broken. This character, relax. Let's wait for him to come out and rank and then, you know, do the hot fixes and stuff. Because we released like two patches for Mauga just based on quick play performance. And like, I don't know how it happened. I don't know why it happened. Like, I played him after they nerfed him, right? He was really weak. I couldn't do anything in quick play. It was really weird, right? So then they hot fixed it instantly. I was like, just give it a little bit of like, the, I feel like. I feel like we we're too fast to judge on like how good a character is in ranked uh, or like in general, just based on like artificial performance and quick play, where everyone's either being silly or the people that playing Malga aren't really tryharding. So I feel like um, what Blizzard should have done is like maybe released one hotfix like when they nerfed him, and then when he came out in ranked, so his performance, and then maybe change up uh, the things. But I know how to fix Malga. I. I personally really enjoy watching people suffer when I hold them and kill them. I think it's really fun. <laughs> so I don't want them to remove the thing where they disable the mobility. I, w I love watching Bo struggle. A Bo rolls <laughs> in, a Bo rolls in, I trap him, and that's it. He's dead. Like, it doesn't matter how much HP he has. A Doomfist goes in, like, ults, I just trap him, he's dead. It's like, God bless, it's really fun. And over time, it's really fun as well, because you place the, the thing on the payload, and they can't do anything. They just die. But um, I feel like main issue with Mauger is two things is his heals he heals way too much when shooting tanks and second of all he shreds tanks so he does love damage to tanks and then he heals way too much from them so it's really hard so maybe maybe they should enable a thing where like he heals less from shooting tanks maybe you know how like uh, uh like so like uh tanks give out less uh ult charge and stuff maybe Mauger should heal less from tanks so he isn't just focused on shooting the tanks i do think that his other side of the gameplay like where you shoot stuff long range right like where you were talking about igniting stuff i feel like that like if they nerf him shredding and healing i think that's okay but if they uh they should maybe buff his long range capabilities a tiny bit so his gameplay isn't like monotonous like just oh i'm just gonna shoot the tank all the time maybe give him like like make him not shred tanks and not be OP against every tank, but give him a little bit more options when shooting stuff from long range, right? Like, um, I don't know what exactly. Maybe less spread. Maybe, I, does he have fall off? He probably does. Does he? Uh, yes, yeah. but it's, it's yeah. Maybe so, less. I don't know if you guys agree, but that's my opinion. So I want to I wanna frame the question this way to you, Sammy, though, which is that, like, you know, we've we've been, we've been on this podcast. We've talked about like supports being overpowered or whatever, and like not being fun for the game. It's I may have picked a biased panel because you guys are all loving life playing Malga, but a, a, a word to the people playing against Malga, right? And I, I I've seen a lot of people complain about like this is not fun at all. At the moment, he's kind of killing 
any tank diversity really in the sense that like if you're run if they're running Mauga, you're not running Mauga, you're like auto losing and you don't really have an option but to try and mirror or like if your supports are worse as well. Battle. Right. It's it's just like a lot a lot harder than most fair matchups we would say. So firstly is that is that healthy? Like should we should we be lauding Malga being released in this state or is it like is it is it a mistake? And if so, like, yeah, how do you weigh in on, on toning him back? Mm. So we'll start with what I would say to people playing against Maga, right? I think the best way to play against him is, one, to pick elusive characters that he can't shoot at a lot. Like, maybe if you're struggling as a DPS, Sombra not to kill him, but to go for his team and try to build EMP for when he cage fights, you just EMP it away instantly. Something like that, right? Like, I don't even think Sombra's a great matchup into him, but I don't think anything's a good matchup into him, to be honest, right now. So you're best off picking things that don't feed into him. If you feed into him, you will lose on every character that you pick, especially as a tank. Don't pick Hog. I know Frito was talking about Ramatra. I think Mauga shreds Ramatra. I think even if you play to poke him back with the new poke, like I think Ram is really underrated right now. And I think Ram would have been really good had Mauga not been buffed again this week, you know, before prior to the holidays. So you have to pick things that don't feed him. Um, as for is it healthy for the game for a character to be released like this? It's not black and white in that subject where I would say it's nice for a tank to actually be what a tank was vision to be for like it's nice having support not be the end all of everything however it's just more pa like the, the way that you got there is just by making an absolutely busted tank that wins every one-on-one -on -one matchup in its role right and may maybe you could say it loses to skinny hitbox heroes like queen or something like that sure but generally speaking like he just wins and the problem is he wins close to the skill floor of the character, right? What's so weird about Mwaga is, is I might be pronouncing the name wrong too, so I apologize, is that once you learn the basics of just shoot the tank, how to alternate and ignite, you go from like this value to this value really quick, and then everything past that point is like Boger said. It's like the little things, right? And that's the little things are what separate the good from the great in this game, but that's the big issue a lot of people have with it. So is it healthy for the game? I don't think, I don't think it is. Um, but I, I don't know. And I, I, as for nerfing him, it's, this is where I feel really bad because SVB, I've been screaming this and you know this, I think we've learned, especially with how fast these patches are going, how difficult it is to balance particularly tanks in 5v5. Because again, the reason why it felt like it was so volatile is because the second that he wasn't winning like a ton of matchups, he was bad, right? Because there's so much other, there's so much competition for that spot. So, it's just, this is where I really feel for the balance team. This is, a, it's really hard to get this right. It's really, really hard to get this right. So, I'm not even sure how I'd change him yet. I think looking at the healing on, from shooting, I, I think you need to find ways to incentivize him to not sit there and just shoot at the other tank. That's what you have to do. But can you is, is the hard part. And I, you have to let him ignite targets faster. So that he can actually shoot at squishies. But they're just going to pick Kiriko. They're going to pick Tracer. They're, and who was it that brought this up? Metro? Was it? Okay. It always is Metro, isn't it? Um, but who, who was it that brought up character hitboxes among streamers first? Sorry, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Kefri could have been Ke Metro. Could have been Kefri. I, I've seen some. Kefri, I feel like. I've seen these complaints on social media. We'll, we'll get to that whole section. I, I want to add something. Yeah. I have a really... I'm going to get hated for this opinion, but it's a really funny thought that I had. So, right, let, let's run through this. Mauga counters tanks, and tanks are not on the same level as Mauga because, you know, he's just way too strong against them. He just outclasses them. So what if instead of nerfing Mauga, we buff all the tanks? That would be really funny. That's a thought. That's a thought. <laughs> I know everyone's going to hate me. The comments nah, are going to hate me as well. I love it. To you, but... I'm not going to lie to you. If supports get to keep their passive and they get to keep all this stuff... Listen... Like, cause you have a claim to the argument. Are countering Malga? That's the only counter to Malga. It's like the support comp. Like, if the support comp is correct, you will probably destroy, a, you know, a Malga. So, if Malga destroys every single tank in one v one, because Malga is just so much better than all the tanks, what if we just slightly nerf his capabilities to kill other tanks and buff the other tanks? I did is not biased at all, but it's just a <laughs> random thought I had. 
Well, I'm, I wanted to hear Yido's thoughts. So I wanted to hear Yido's thoughts first, and then I, I, I might chime in myself. But Yido, is that the way to fix the MAGA problem, or do you have some solutions of your own? Hey, I mean, I'm all for it. Like, wasn't that one of the promises early on? They said they were going to make tank, like, bruisers instead of tanks in Overwatch 2. They said something like that. Like, they give it a whole new name, selling it as, like, brawlers. the lobby rate. Brawlers, there you go. I mean, I'm all for tanks being stronger. I'm, I'm, I'm very for that. Because the other option is you start nerfing everything else. But, yeah. Um, I think, in my opinion... Cardiac overdrive is like one of the main breaking points with Malga. Like I think the the fact that your teammates also heal from like being in range is just gonna like result in some crazy comps of just like I, I've seen a lot of Bastion creeping up or Reaper or May and like just you know like the cringe comps pretty much. And honestly, does he need it? Like, does he need to like heal his allies? Can't it just be for him? I don't know. That that's just a thought that I have. I feel like he could just get away with having it. And then as for like I mean, the main complaint that we're all having here is that too much tank shooting. Why not just, like, I don't know, either shorten the range on the dualies, so it's like you have to be, like, barrel stuffing to, like, be able to do that that dually damage or increase the accuracy on the long range. I, I feel like that's, like, a pretty common thought. Seems like a no-brainer to me. Just mm -hmm. so it makes it so that you don't tank diff unless you're in their face like crazy. Those that's are my fair. thoughts. What if, what if they lowered the ignite chance but lowered the amount of shields you got from the crits from the ignite so it's easier to ignite people so like you could actually ignite the squishies mm. uh, maybe i don't know sorry go ahead i'm just thinking out loud no it's worth it's worth live brainstorming and and feel free to kind of chime and interrupt at any point if you come up with an idea like wait actually i think i think i have a, a thing that would be that would be good before we move on to, to the the can of worms that boger has opened about Maybe we should just buff all the tanks, and we'll we'll, we'll talk about that you in a second. I think that her, I think that leads nicely onto some of the other things we can talk about. But just one more word, I think, on this idea of how an Overwatch Two hero should release, like what kind of state they should release in, because we've now seen a little bit of a spectrum, right? You you guys mentioned some, like launch Kiriko, very strong, although it did take people a little bit of time to figure out, like actually, if you just heal bot on this character, farm Kitsune Rush is just ridiculous, right? So it took a little bit of time. Whereas Maga has been a bit more immediate. I think everyone immediately on comp launch is like, yeah, this is this is doing a lot. And then of course, we've had, you know, Life Weaver be very underwhelming. Ramatra was kind of middling, like he was a little bit good for a while. Then they kind of changed him and then he wasn't so good. So we've had like a whole spectrum. And of course, it draws into the equation, as I mentioned earlier, the idea of like pay to win. I've seen this brought up now a lot more than before. And obviously, this is something I spoke to, to Jared Ness directly about. Uh... Jared New, sorry, directly about where they kind of said, well, we're actually, we want our goal to be to let heroes be available to everyone on launch. And that's kind of like a, a, a quote unquote goal that they're striving towards. I don't know. They obviously, he couldn't commit and didn't commit to a specific, like, this is what we're going to do and this is when we're going to do it. But it seems like that's something on the dev's mind too. So how do you guys feel about this idea of the potential pay to win element? Sammy, do you got your hands up? Go ahead. I think it's I think it's more true than I would have thought it would be pre Overwatch two for a couple of reasons, right? One, I at least in Warzone, and I talked about this SVB, the, the guns that are in the battle pass become accessible to everybody. Like they opened up a ton of the like, the, especially during Vanguard, like a lot of the SMGs in Warzone were in the battle pass. You bought the battle pass, you got them early. And at least as another player, if you killed somebody, you could pick up the Akimbo SMGs they put in the game that were broken. You could pick up the Akimbo Marcos. You could pick up the Blixen. You could pick up a ton of guns that made meta, right? But even after that, they would be accessible to everybody midway through the season or the next season. The fact that heroes like Kiriko and Ramatra are still locked by default, especially the new players, when Mauga is the meta tank right now, except guess what? Suzu is the most important ability to make sure that his experience, like, actually can still get picked. So I think what, the one thing that really just doesn't sit well in my, in my mouth is the fact that heroes like Kiri, and yeah, you could say you could play to unlock them. Ramatra still 35 wins, right? I, hot take. If the hero's been out for over a year, it shouldn't be locked at all, right? But they're still charging $10 for it, which I, I just think that's silly. I don't think that's fair. As for Mwaga and kind of being pay to win, it, it's going to stick out more on the tank roll, I, I think it's hard to argue that it isn't, especially in his case where 
that big value jump is where you you're getting the most value out of his skill curve right it's pretty close to the floor it's you just got to learn how to shoot right so while there are a lot of niche things at the top that you have to learn like it's very very close to the skill floor to win the 1v1 against most characters people they you talk about this all the time people don't have a lot of time to play the games right what if you're a, a working adult who wants to come back and play reinhardt well when Boger can just sit there and run and gun Cloudy for 10 wins in a row for all the Ryan Chads out there. All the Diva actually is decent, can slow, slow him down. But if you just want to come and play your fan favorite heroes and you didn't buy the battle pass or say you even just want to do it and they've bought it, it's hard to argue that it's not. Now, is it absolutely blatant? No, but it's in the it's in the Goldilocks zone. It's in the territory. And I'm glad that Jared said something about it because I, I'm surprised not as many people are talking about it. Gidal, I want I want your thoughts on this. Like, is it unethical in some way, or is it just the devs trying their best to put out a hero that they think is strong and playable and avoid a, a life reverse situation? To, to add on, I don't think it's unethical. I think okay. they needed the character to be strong, so I, sh okay. I should have. Allowed. No, no, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I'm with that. I think um, that new heroes should be strong. However, what's he what's he for free on the battle pass? Is it like 45 or something? Yeah, 45. Yeah, they got to make that way less. It's got to be like 20, maybe 15, like something that like within a gaming session or two, you can unlock them, right? That way, when you do go into comp, it's, you don't really have that great of an excuse. But 45, that's like, you could be playing for a week and you still won't have them in comp. So I think for the most part, yeah, that's a bit too much. Um, and I think it's fine that they're strong because that makes the new heroes exciting, right? And interesting. It draws more viewers. So, and players. Yeah, I mean, obviously, that's that's kind of maybe our POV. I mean, some people will say, well, I, I will, you know, 45, nowhere near I'll have that kind of time. This is just Blizzard trying to force me into buying the Battle Pass, right? It's like, it's Blizzard's mm -hmm. way of of trying to, like, softly coerce me. And, and I've seen, you know, a lot of people feel this way. They're kind of like, I, I'm just, it, it makes them want to buy the Battle Pass even less because they're like, oh, they're just doing this to, to make me do it. And I don't even want to support them anymore. Boger, how do you feel about those kind of accusations? I don't think it's that hard to unlock the, the heroes like i agree with some i i would prefer if they all the heroes were free obviously like i i i think like i think um especially for old heroes like ramatra at this point like they're over a year old like come on but um uh i do prefer if everything was just unlocked all the time i don't think i don't know how much money they're making from people paying for the thing because like if you think about it you need like 35 wins per row to and then go into the tutorial to unlock older like newer older heroes the the heroes that are not this season you know for example i i need to go play play i think win win 35 games on tank and then go into practice range and unlock ram if you're a new player you need 50 wins until you get into ranked anyways so at that point you will unlock all the characters unless i'm missing something all the you know role specific characters if you stuck to tank or support or dps you just have to go to practice range but obviously i i feel like it is better if all the characters are just unlocked straight up. Um, I think uh, I think this entire shtick with uh, locking characters is really old at this point. Like it was way back, it was popular with League and stuff. Right now, it's still a thing in League of Legends, but the the game has so many characters there. I don't think it's comparable even. And what else were we talking about exactly? I think you two no, uh, mentioned something, but I don't remember what you two talk about. The, the power level of the. Uh... The oh yeah, oh, of Mauga power level. I I do think it's kind of pay to win right now. I agree with everyone. I think um I back in I a few months ago I wouldn't say it's pay to win, uh but right now with Mauga I think um, most people will struggle a hundred percent playing against Mauga if they don't lock Mauga themselves. Diva can be good. Junker Queen can be good. Ramatra is not good against Mauga and like you just heal so much against Ram with Mauga. It's crazy. Like it doesn't matter if you all all Ramatra can do is block. And if he doesn't block, he dies. That's it uh, when playing against Malga. So I do believe it's kind of pay to win. I do believe they should remove the thing where they, like, uh, you unlock characters by buying the battle pass and stuff. Just give it to everyone. And um, I do think they should release characters in a similar state that they released Malga. I, I'm sorry. I think people are going to disagree with me. But I played Life Weaver. <laughs> I, played Life. I know how shit that is. Nobody was excited about that character at all. Like, nobody cared about him because he was just so bad. And right now, he's really good. Don't get me wrong. I think he's really strong. But um, I think 
characters should be released stronger so people are excited to log in and stump people for a few weeks before they nerf them. And I think that's what most games do. I think I don't think they should be as strong as Malga, but it should be exciting to log into the game and play the new hero because nobody was excited to log in and play Life Weaver. Do you think that was because of Life Weaver's core design being more of a character kind of like Mercy rather than like a mechanically intensive character? I, I think it was definitely tied to his strength. But do, do you think that people in general wouldn't have been as interested in Weaver I, due to his mechanics? I, yeah, I think he's really satisfying. I, I think he's really fun. I think he's fun. I think I agree like to some extent it's because he relies on his team and it's more like mercy and stuff i think uh, you need a lot of thinking to actually be good at life weaver there's a lot of things you can do i i can talk about it all the time uh for a long time but um i think obviously the most obvious reason is because just the character was so bad on release right like you just log in like why what is the point of going in logging in playing the new buying paying ten dollars to play life weaver and get rolled every game when you can just play <laughs> Baptiste, Lari, oh, Lari was not. Baptiste, Zen, or Kiriko, right? Like, those characters are just so much better than Life Weaver, at least were. That it's not even comparable. So, what's the point, you know? So, yeah, I, I prefer Mauga release to Life Weaver every day of the week. People complain about Life Weaver, it's so bad, never release a character like that. Then they release Mauga, it's like, fuck, he's so OP. Then release him, like, <laughs> release OP characters and then nerf them. Don't release bad characters and then buff them. Thank you. Yeah, agreed. I think that's the only gripe I have with it is that I think they flipped up the week one patch and the week two patch going into comp, where if he was in this state last week and the quick play only, it would be way less it would stick out like less of a sore thumb but to be to be fair to blizzard here and i don't know if i want to give him credit for it but i will here it's the holiday season you've got a, a hero to push out before the holidays right if you came out super strong sometimes you're gonna miss it right but again i i just think that this format makes it really really hard for them to nail it especially like in the winter you know maybe, maybe that's what they should do they should flip the tank cycle up and put the tank earlier in the year because that one's going to be the hardest and then put supports towards the end because we all know the sport's going to be broken anyway, right? So, you know. <laughs> you know already well, already well. alluding to our future sections. I mean, there's a, there's a couple interesting things I want to I want to mention there, which is that, uh, like, I want to I wanna dig deeper into the how we actually unlock the heroes. But before that, I think that another interesting thing that Jared told me was that, you know, quick play is the game for them and for the community, right? Like, we often focus on comp because like none of us really spend too much time in quick play unless you were grinding a hero before you know the the comp release like yield was with malga so none of us really spend too much time in quick play but jared basically says that like most the majority of the players are playing quick play and they also view quick play as like a serious game mode it's not the like troll around and, and fuck around game mode that some people have kind of felt it was they they're like no you play quick play you should play it all so it is interesting to think that we've kind of as you said, done the reverse of maybe what they should do, because let's let's try and talk creatively for how they can approach this problem going forwards. And I will come to Boger in a second. How they can go this problem going forwards is that yeah, maybe the hero needs to be stronger on quick play launch, like on actual launch, but then tone down a little bit for comp launch. Because I think the other way is what causes these problems, right? I I I think the other day you accept if they were broken in quick play, right? If like the two weeks before they releasing comp. They're a little bit gigabusted. I think there's going to be frustration, understandably, and I felt this too, especially in the Malga mirrors. They are incredibly brainless, incredibly, like, not fun for what Overwatch is supposed to be or what anyone wants to play, I think. It's just two tanks shooting each other and everyone just dumping everything into two tanks. But I think everyone would understand to some extent if the hero was a little bit busted on quick play release. But then two weeks afterwards, as you've had enough data, you need to pull it back. And of course, this is where they're strong safe side of strong is where they're aiming for right like that's that is the ideal of what you'd want it's like hey, we want him to be strong we want to be comfortable that he's not going to be broken it just feels like they've missed the mark this time and it's it's on the unsafe side of strong like this is i think everyone day one was like nah this is just too much like this is a bit much so i think they probably for future hero releases they can they need to tone that back like one whole notch boger what did you want to add you know why quick play is the most popular mode in overwatch one simple like answer one simple reason is because competitive sucks it is so bad and that's why quick play is so popular like obviously there's a big casual community but ranked is so bad right there is no purpose to grinding it that everyone's just swapped to playing quick play all the time like even big streamers like flats mostly just play quick play at this point like there's just no point to grinding hopefully with a new 
you know, you were trying, there's more purpose to it and it's more hype. But right now, it's just so bad to play comp. And uh, I feel like everyone's given up on climbing on comp, especially because they're going to be reworking it. And uh, yeah, I feel like once they do make comp more fun, if they do make more make it more fun, quick play will become less popular. It might still dominate, but it's not going to be as dominant. That's fair. I, I, I think I, I agree with your point 100%. I do think quick play will, yeah, it will still be the way the majority of the player base interact with it. Uh, but that is, I think, a fair point that I think a lot of people are looking at this season as like a on hold season until season nine comes out and we get the better comp system. Now, going back to the idea of like the future hero releases, do you guys have any feelings for, for how they should do it? Because we have to quite, obviously, it'd be easy for us to sit here and say, give all the heroes right now to everyone who logs in, right? Like if someone logs in tomorrow, give them Kiriko, give them Jungle Queen, give them Ramatra. Is there some middle ground here? Is there some solution where there's some monetization aspect of it, but it still feels fair? Like, for example, should all the heroes just be unlocked in comp, but maybe gay kept in quick play? Or would that be the reverse? If we've just said that quick play is where the majority of people play, maybe they need to gay keep comp, but keep quick play, let everyone play it in quick play. Like, what do you guys think? Yidl, I haven't heard from you in a bit. Do you have any thoughts on this whole kind of system? Or even what Boger said about comp and quick play and how the hero should release on quick play versus comp launch. I'm going to have to go last on this one. I'm still collecting right. my thoughts. You collect, you collect. Sam, you hit me. I think what was so appealing about old Overwatch competitive was that the game did a great job. And this is, I think, why people really believed in the eSport and honestly just enjoyed it, whether it's quick play or competitive. I don't think it matters where this is. Is that when you queued into the game you felt like you were on an even playing field with the other team. What started to make Overwatch be less enjoyable for a lot of people was when the strength of characters compared to the degree of difficulty they required were whack. In the sense that Moira just was a objectively better, or Brig is an objectively better hero than Genji was, right? Where it's like, okay, well, in order to be a good Genji, you have to have be incredibly good at the hero. This is more so OG Brig than current Brig, but it's, you could still argue it, right? Um, where those exchanges weren't fair, and that drove a lot of people away from the game. Where it's like, okay, well, I grinded all this time to be good at, say, Genji, for example, but it could be true for any character. And somebody is picking Brigida, not putting in, like, half the effort I am, and I, now I'm done. So that, that was just, you know, the difference with character strength. If you go to the point where it's the ability to even access the character... That's that feeling, but example like e even worse, right? It's, it's it's even more so uh, frustrating for a lot of people. So I think I don't think it matters if it's quick play or competitive. I think especially in competitive, though, you got to prioritize game integrity there. And I think that's a big reason why so many people have just stopped caring in this game and stopped caring a long time. Is like you know in, in the competitive mode. I don't think anything should be locked ever for anybody, especially given how important individual abilities are in Overwatch in general, and especially true in the ability exchange in 5v5, where it's like, okay, well, I'm going to say this. I think Onanade is an essential ability, and I think if they have to rework Onanade before they rework any of the MOs that people complained about for years, I'm slamming my hammer down on 5v5. I swear I'm going to slam that, but I'm waiting to see what they do. <laughs> but for example, like Kiri Suzu is so important especially if they pick Ana to the game itself, that it's not fair that that should be locked from anybody at any given time. I don't care if they're in Plat, I don't care if they're in Bronze. I think that one on principle. Quick play, because it's quick play, and it's more casual, and people want fun, exciting stuff. Quick play is more of like the Fortnite, if you will, and comp is more of the CSGO, I guess you could say, in terms of the communities. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that like literally in terms of how they play. I'm just saying like, you know, pe people play CS more seriously, but Fortnite's wacky, it's fun. There's constantly events, right? There's constantly some new skill. I think Eminem came out last week, right? <laughs> you know, we're, we're, <laughs> by the way, if you guys have not played Lego Fortnite, that shit is awesome. You all have got to play Lego Fortnite. It is so much fun. Um, but no, I, I think it's okay in quick play where it's supposed to be more wacky and, you know, I, I want them to be able to make their money because it will hopefully allow them to get more resources. Who doesn't want to see that? Right. Um, but in comp, mm -mm, mm -mm, everybody should have everything in comp period. Yidl, have you managed to collect your thoughts on this? Yeah, it, it's a pretty tough problem to solve, to be honest. I mean, the only thing I can really think, which would still kind of suck is that like, if it's a hero from the previous season, like maybe you'd have to 
unlock it before you can queue comp and maybe they lower the standards for unlocking it but even that would suck because like if you just want to play comp when you play overwatch you get on and it's like oh i gotta win fucking 20 games to get this hero like it is a bit much um it's a tough problem i'm not really sure how they solve that no that's fair yeah. it, it is a tough problem and it's not one that's because it's this is where you have to balance practicalities with with you know idealism right like idealism of course Jared himself said, you, we'd love for everyone to play the heroes and have them all on launch. But again, they did, they said it at the start of Overwatch 2 that the heroes are our biggest product. Like the, we, the heroes are the things that people come to watch for. Now, of course, there's, there's skins and there's plenty of controversy around skins that we'll get to later on in the podcast. But, but I still think that maybe probably a, a smaller fraction of people ever buy skins. And whereas the heroes, you kind of all want the battle pass. You kind of, everyone is sort of encouraged to buy the battle pass every season. So these are like their standard money makers. So I can I can sympathize with that problem. Bogart, any thoughts on that before we move on uh, a little bit to like supports my, that have been alluded to? My thought is that I had a funny thing happen. I was I don't remember what I was doing. I think I was just playing on a different account. I wasn't doing unranked gems or anything. But I I, I was playing I think tank or support. I don't remember what it was. And um, the most optimal pick in that situation was like queen or something. Some of my team was like. Can you swap queen? And then I went to swap queen. I didn't have her in law. <laughs> I was just looking. I was like, fuck, wait. This, this, I can't. I can't. I automatically might just lose the game because I have this hero a lot. Because like, it was funny. I don't really know how to solve this. I'm not like, uh, I don't know. I, I think they should have all the heroes unlocked and ranked and stuff. Um, I'm, I'm, Blizzard are smart. I'm sure they'll figure it out eventually. It's, I don't know. It's like, go, go crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure there are sophisticated systems they could create. I agree with Sam in the sense that I, I, I also believe that, like, I think in comp, they should just be unlocked. Like, I, there's an argument to be made that how can you let someone play a hero in comp maybe they've maybe never played elsewhere. But I still think just fundamentally, when you enter the comp mode, everyone should have all the heroes. And then, you know, let them, you know, maybe they're gate kept in quick play if need be. And maybe you can play them in the custom games or in arcade or something. Or there's like a specific arcade that you can play the hero in. But I do think that the deeper we go, the, my, my bigger problem isn't even the heroes on the launch of their season. It's when you miss the season. That's that's the bigger problem. Like yeah, it's not... It, like 45, whether we say like bring it down lower. At the end of the day, I think at some point people will unlock if they're, if they're actually playing the game a lot. They'll unlock all these heroes as they're playing every season. But if you ever miss a season or two, you stop playing for a while. Obviously, I, I, I don't demand sympathy for alt accounts, but I've also been in the situation Boger mentioned where it's like, I forget I'm on an alt account and I'm like, oh, I, I, I want to go pick Iliari. Oh, shit. I actually don't have her on this account. But even just other players, you know, just you take a break from the game and you want to come back a, a while later. You, It's hard to expect someone to be constantly tuning in and constantly grabbing all the heroes and then punish them. Or a new player who decides somewhere down the line, yeah. To try Watch Two for the first time, which I'm sure they would love. They would love for that to be the case that a, a large swathe of new players try the game. You're gonna feel a little bit shitty when everyone else is swapping around and you can't to the hero you want. So, yeah. any last words on this before Me. we move on? Yeah, go I ahead. want to say. So, why don't they make the system similar to like Apex and League, where you collect points or maybe use pre-existing coins or whatever? I don't know. And you can buy characters with them. So instead of just wins, because the wins are really annoying. Right, like it. It's not the hardest thing to do, but it's still annoying to do thirty-five wins or fifty or like forty uh, level forty-five. Instead, so just make it so you can buy with currency that you can stack up, even when there is no new character to farm. So that people that consistently play the game can always unlock the hero when they're released, and uh, you can even make it a little bit better. Where if you're mid-game and you want to swap. And you don't have the character locked, and you have the coins, you can just press buy character right there, and then you buy it and lock it and you play him. You know, like, why not? I think it's a great idea, personally. You could do it. I think, I should be to, to close it out, I kind of agree with Boger on that. My, my biggest gripe is the characters that are six months or older, because that's what I noticed. I, was, I wanted to go on an alt to play an open queue, because if we all try to play in our mains on the open queue ladder, like, there's not usually games in GM or, like, high GM. And so you'll sit in queue for an hour, but if you go on alt with your friends, there actually weren't ranked restrictions based on the sr of where you queued and it was throwing us all over the place but i want they're like yo go ramakshra and i was like wait i don't have it unlocked and it just felt it just felt terrible it felt terrible and i started asking like people around that same question they're like yeah I, I missed this season so i don't have this and it's just it's just gonna stockpile over time i think it's easy to say maybe six to nine months later 
you know, or do what Boger said with the with the points in game. And I, and I do think this is a unique problem for Watch compared to some of the other competitors. Although again, Jared said we yeah. don't really have a specific competitor, but. Overwatch is the only game that I can think of where, like, the hero swapping exists so much, right? And they've now leaned into it. You know, they've now come out and said that they actually think this is going to be the way that Overwatch is going forward. Sam, I, I'm sure you had interesting thoughts. We we might touch on that at some point about them saying, actually, we were wrong. We were we were naive about the the thought that there wouldn't be hard counters in this game, that there wouldn't be a bunch of people, you know, needing to swap. And they kind of see that as the vision now. And that just doesn't apply to, you know, League of Legends or Valorant or yeah. any any of these other competitors where, you know, you have heroes on lower, even Apex Legends, because you can still just pick your hero and grind your hero and you're not necessarily flexing so much, right? You're like, you like a couple things and you run those couple things. If we're going to be in this world of Overwatch where you're encouraged to swap or you're encouraged to like dabble a little bit in a bunch of heroes based off what's happening, then we do need to, then it becomes a gameplay issue to not have access to all the heroes for everybody. So there is, that's... That, I think. We can now move on. I think that's a good, wide discussion of Mauga and what he's done to the game in that sense. But there's one more thing that he has brought up and you guys have alluded to, which is this idea of the supports. And if, do they control when it's especially it's a Mauga mirror? I've definitely felt this where it's like if you're running Ana Kiriko, they're running like more Mercy. It's kind of free. Um, and of course, there's been a lot of rage on Twitter recently about like Suzu, for example. But I think Ana Nade has come under a lot of scrutiny and I'll chime in here first, and, and then I'll throw it over to you guys. There's, I've seen a lot of people asking for Ana and Nade to be nerfed, basically. They want Ana and Nade to be gone. I would, all I'd say to them is, I, I think, be careful what you ask for. Like, be careful the world you're trying to create. Because I already think Hog is giga-busted. Like, I think that character is mega-busted, and people have not quite caught on to, like, how unkillable this dude is. And Sam, we've talked about this on previous podcasts with Flats, and you, your experiences playing Doom and stuff. But Maga falls in that same category where... Trying to kill Maga without an Ana is horrendous. And I think people are seeing it backwards. They're seeing it as like, oh, look, Ana is the only thing capable of killing a Hog, of killing a Maga. So we need to nerf Ana Nade because it's so strong. But what they're not thinking about is the other world where it's like, well, we take Ana Nade away. Now what? Now how do you kill the Hog AFK on card who's just going to vape like all the time, damage reduction, healing, 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 unkillable, and can keep trying to hook you and keep trying to interrupt your tank, right? So I think... While I agree that there can be a better solution to on an aid, like there can be ways to work around it. You can maybe not make it 100% healing, uh, anti-healing. You can you can maybe make it a smaller number, a bigger cooldown, or take away the support passive so that Ana needs to nade herself more. All of these are viable options, but I would hate to see them come before a nerf to Hog or Mauga or a need or create a lack of a need for a hero like Ana to shut down certain tanks. Right? The problem is you need Ana. So first, I'd like them to address the reason why you need Ana and make these other tanks killable without an anti-nade. So those are my thoughts on the anti-nade debacle. I want to take it to Yidl first. Yidl, how are your thoughts on the anti-nade situation? And just support in general. Nade. I hate nade. <laughs> I hate it. I feel like, um, I think the, the good spot is, like, I don't want to play tank and get countered by one single hero on any of the other roles. Like, if I'm going to get countered, it's either, like, I want it to be a skill matchup between me and the other tank or like their whole team's trying to counter me type of thing. Like if it feels like I'm getting shut down by one hero, I, I just find that so like toxic for the game. Um, just because like tanks such an important role, you don't want to be trading one for one, right? Like if this was chess, the, the tanks, like we'll say a queen piece and then the is probably like a bishop or something, right? Like it's not a good trade to trade like your value. Um, so overall, I mean, I don't, know exactly what they do with nade um i hope they do change it because it's it's been the source of my unfun playing the tank role i i'd say like when i was having fun playing ramatra when he released i just remember it was good for one season and then the next season it was more and more on i'm just like bro i can't do anything about it like i throw my shield up then she nades the side or she still sleeps me when it's down like i just don't like not having any control over it other than wait until she uses it well, she just doesn't use it. Then I'm waiting for nothing, you know? I just find that to be obnoxious. But I wish I had, like, a good answer, but I don't have, like, a specific solution for it. No, that's a very fair complaint. I think that's a very fair thing to bring up. And, and you're right in that a lot of people feel this way, that, like, Diana's just chucking her cooldowns at me and I can't play the game on tank. Like, she's just sleep, anti, sleep, anti, sleep, anti. And, and of course, there's other cooldowns you have to wait for, too, right? People talk about, like, oh, wait for the cooldowns to come out or bait them out. 
But I'm all, not only trying to bait anti and sleep, which are being cycled, but there's a Suzu I've got to wait for, or maybe I've got to wait for the Discord orb to wear off of me. You know, like there's so many other things you're waiting for. By the time you're done, the, the next round is back. So I totally understand yeah. the frustration. Bogar, I'm going to take it to you and then I'll let Sam round off this this discussion. Bogar, how do you feel about... I love anti- Nate. Mm-hmm. I think it's a great ability. I'm not joking. I disagree with you, though. I think it's a good ability. And I, I as a tank player, uh, I think a lot of people misunderstand the concept of, like, frustrations and, like... What like a lot of people get frustrated with abilities and then they get like really mad and they think the ability needs to be changed. Maybe the ability needs to be changed, but I don't think the issue stems from Nate. I think we didn't have this issue in Overwatch One, and we didn't have this issue in Overwatch One because all the tanks except a few uh, could deal with Nate, right? And even if you couldn't deal with Nate, your other tank could deal with Nate. I'm not talking about six v six, five v five is better. <laughs> wants to say something? I am very I'm Switzerland in that opinion. I don't really care personally. But my honest opinion is that every new tank release in Overwatch 2 has been a tank that has nothing to deal with Nate. Like, you can't deal with Nate. Like, if you compare Winston, you have Bubble. And it's a really fun mini game where you try to bubble the Nate and play around it. And if you get Nate, you can jump away. Diva could Matrix it. That's fun. Orisa back in the day could, you know, just place a shield down. Like, Roadhog would get punished by it. But there was another tank to help him out. And I, I'm okay with only one or two tanks getting punished by a nade because the tank is like just, you know, that way. You know, Roadhog. I'm okay with nade crushing Roadhog 100% of the time because he heals a lot. But every new tank that's been released by Overwatch 2 in Overwatch 2 has been like Ramatra. He has a shield, but you can't really block nade. It's with you. You can, but not consistent, right? Uh, you have Queen, you can't block Nade. You can shout, but you still die uh, if the enemy team is good. Uh, Mauga, you can't block Nade. And um, did they release any new tanks? I don't think so. But the, yeah, you can't do anything. Like It's like you're playing the game and there is nothing for you to do except hope that your Kirku will cleanse the Nade that will come and you have no way to counteract it. So I don't believe uh, that Nade in itself is uh, the problem. I believe that they have not given tanks the tools necessary to counteract nade in a fun way that is that makes the game more engaging like winston bubble diva matrix even with ball if like obviously i don't want to explain the game to you though on ball but my idea is that like when you're playing ball you have your shields even if you get naded you you can still survive pretty consistently i feel like against like anna unless she sleeps you so i feel like this issue with nade and this hatred with nade comes with uh comes from the fact that they have not given us the tools to deal with Nade and instead just relied on our teammates helping us with it, which makes the game really unfun because you can't rely on your teammates in Ryan because, like, some guy called Bonafart 4 is not going to play <laughs> Kiriko and you're going to die every fight, and it's really annoying. So I think we're all focused on the wrong thing. I think we should be focusing on, uh, on, a, on, on, on like what they should be giving tanks to be able to deal with CC as well and Nade. It's like... Again, like Overwatch 1, tanks, there was a bunch of CC, yes, but we still had tools to deal with CC. And Overwatch 2, tanks don't have tools with, to, to deal with CC. In Overwatch 2, tanks are DPSs, and that's it. You know, there's no, you know, anything to it. Like, Queen is like a DPS. Yeah, Romatra is kind of like a DPS. Mauga is a DPS 100%. So we don't have utility, and we just kind of pray that she won't land the nade, and that's annoying. Like, it's just boring. Yeah, that's so, my opinion. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was gonna say I'm gonna let Yil go on this before because I know Sam. You, I'm sure you're yeah, cooking. Let him go. Let him go. Let you're him go, cooking him go. right now. I, all I'll say is I think we discussed this a lot in the in the various role debates. You know, the tank debate, support debate. I think the idea we're talking about here is ability mitigation. I think I I like that term to refer to this. Is that a lot of tanks have damage mitigation, but not all of them have ability mitigation, which is like how do you deal with a, a thing being thrown at you like that, right? And I think that, you know, a lot of people will say, well, uh, anti nade is like this one thing that sticks out and therefore it's limiting the design of tanks. But all I'll say is that this is a f- core issue they need to think about because in the future they may release another thing like anti nade from a different character, like whether that be a DPS or a support. So if this idea is that tanks struggle, tanks without ability mitigation struggle to deal with the thing, it may crop up again when they release X Hero. So there does need to be an answer somewhere, whether that's nerfing these type of abilities or creating something for the tank. Yidl. You tell me now, how do you respond to Bogart's idea that, like, actually, it's 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 good. Antinade good. Yeah, I'm, I'm on both sides of it. Like, I think 
the solution is either you could change anti-nade or you can start giving all the tanks counterplay. But I, at this point, like as we're getting another tank that doesn't have any counterplay to it, I think the solution would probably be easier to change nade because we're, we're racking up all the tanks that can't do anything. So are we going to start giving all these tanks some kind of solution or just change the nade? That's that's why where I'm at. I'm like either way. I feel and, like I'm sorry. I feel like if you don't if you change nade, it's gonna make a lot of tanks really oppressive very consistently. Like I'm not saying they're gonna be OP hundred percent of the time, but like imagine playing against Mauga or Roadhog right now without nade. It's it's gonna be hell on earth for four players on your team, maybe even five, right? It's gonna be so annoying, right? And I feel like I, we should change the core philosophy of how we make future tanks and maybe change the current tanks a little bit because as svb said if we nerf nade right now they will release an ability like nade in the future that will again make tanks struggle because it's not about the nade or the ability in specific it's about how tanks are created right now and how we are not given the tools to deal with these things. I would rather have tanks deal less damage and be less of a DPS character and have more utility, like Winston, for example, so the game is more engaging and I can deal with CC and Nade more consistently than just run around and shoot the tanks 24-7 and pray that I don't get naded. Later down the line, they're going to really introduce a different type of CC, for sure. And tank will still struggle because they've not given us these tools. Even if they nerf nade right now, it's not going to solve the issue, I feel like. Yidl, any final response for I let Sam go? Because I know he's he's ready. No, no? That, was, that was it. You're happy with it? Okay, okay. Yeah. Sam, go ahead. Go ahead, Sam Yidl. You guys crack me up, you know that? You guys crack me up watching you guys slowly come to the realization, right? Slowly but surely, that everything we claim that we could do is actually harder. And SVB, to acknowledge your point, I, I, I do appreciate Blizzard to basically saying, yeah, we were wrong about the counter thing. I don't, I don't think anybody really saw it coming, to be fair to them. Um, even like us on the show, we were kind of like, hey, we got to wait and see. So to be fair to them, as, at least they acknowledge it now. Um, I'm compl I, I love Nade. I love Ana. I, I never think I never thought Nade was one of the biggest problems in the game, um, and I think the only reason it's become a problem is or, or a couple of things, right? Because remember at launch, like Ana was not picked at all. I mean, we all said Ana was terrible, right? Because of Kiri um, and Monkey being in the meta instead of the tanks uh, that have come up. Um, a couple things. I think it's a good point that Boger made that I didn't think about, where he basically said the past three tanks that have come out. None of them have had real ability mitigation. It's all been damage mitigation. Or the, basically, even, even his heal, even Mongo's heal, is t going against... It, it kind of is damage mitigation in that, like, you're shooting to mitigate the damage and heal out heal the damage you take. And then Queens was just the shout. So you haven't had a tank like D.Va come out that actually... And be strong that would make Ana obsolete in one second, and we all know it, right? Because she just wouldn't, she just wouldn't get played. Um, Nade is so important to stopping a couple of those tanks that can be oppressive, like Roadhog, like Maga, like even, even Queen sometimes, right? Depending on, on, on the map that you're on and, and the character that you're on. Um, I think that that being in the game used to add a lot of depth because Nade's been around for a long time. And Nade was, all that was not complained about towards the latter half of Overwatch 1. I think the key thing is here is why is it able to be used so much easier? And this might be where they, I hate to admit it, they might have to change the ability. But if they change Nade, they better change some of these MOs too. Because there's no excuse to not do that at this point if everyone has been hating on this. Um, I got sidetracked a little bit there, sorry. Uh, what was I saying? What was I saying before this? Um, uh, how the heroes have been released like DPS, no ability mitigation. Yeah, yeah. So basically the tanks that came out previously uh, are all susceptible to Nade. And also, the support passive lets it always get used forward instead of being right on the Ana. And she had to nade herself a ton in Overwatch 1. That you, now that you don't, you don't have to do that. To top it off, there's one less tank on each team, which means that landing the nade is without a doubt easier, um, which is why I can understand there's some frustrations about it, right? It's, it's easier to... We can all agree, guys. It is so much oh, easier yeah. to land nades in this game. So if it's easier to land nades, you never have to use it on yourself. I can understand why people would want it nerfed, but you have to be very careful about doing so because if you do, you need Nade to be good against Hog. You need Nade to be good against Mauga. You, it adds depth to the game, 
And I, I think I know people are saying, "Oh, hard counters." It, it's it's not a hard. It, it kind of it, it's close to a hard counter. But there are ways you can deal with it. It's just not rewarding to deal with it, right? So I, I would start with the support passive before I change Nade. Um, but, you know, that would solve a bigger issue. Because, again, it's just going to come back up. It's lit it's just going to come back up. It, it always will. There will be a new character that does something like that. There will be, or whether it's Queen, whether it's another Ana. I don't know, right? But it, it's I think a, a permanent solution is to look at the support passive and make it so that the Anas are more encouraged to nade themselves. And it's not always, hey, I can chuck a free nade and not take damage for two seconds on a corner where I'm playing in the back line anyway, where the single tank, and I'm sure Yeetel and Boger will both agree here, it's much more difficult to all in a back line in this game because you leave your team. And I'm not saying it's not possible, right? But it's generally, it's not as consistent because Yeetel, like in Overwatch 1 or even Boger, I remember playing against you and ML7 duos all the time. You farm the nano, then you can just jump straight on the back line. You can let your D.Va flex, whether the D.Va's going in with you or going to peel your back line. And you were open to go make that play. Play, that's it, it's harder to do that in this game because the fights are much more meshed together than a lot of micro fights happening everywhere um but no i i don't want to see nade get changed yet personally i i love the ability i love playing anna and i think that she's just continuous she's been nerfed again and again she was only good for a little bit too but now she's just been nerfed and nerfed and nerfed and overshadowed and you know i i don't want anna to bite the bullet for a support passive that's really really good a a situation where you you make the switch to 5v5 and like a lot of the those band-aids where hog is competing with all the other tanks for the spot okay well he needs to have less weakness to his counter or else he'll never get picked it's harder i i get it but i'm not sure if changing the ability is, is the right way to go and it is a tough one as, as they've released themselves like anna is the most played character in overwatch 2 which some might say is is she's played because she's so strong and you know, that she's always meta. I've heard this complaint. Well, she's always been meta in Overwatch 2. Like, people are always playing her. But also, we might say that it's because she's very fun. Because people enjoy playing her. And they find that, you know, skill to reward ratio to be, to be you know, something they want to engage with. Rather than maybe playing a different hero that might be a bit more free. Which brings me to my next point, Yidl. Which is just like this, you know, whether it's Nade. Or whether it's Suzu. Or whether it's Rez. Or whether it's Immortalities. We're kind of, I, I feel like support players feel a little bit under attack at the moment. You know, they've kind of had these accusations that they're the strongest role and, you know, they get all the good shit. And I've, I'm seeing the sentiment rise among support players that, you know, we're, they want everything that we love gone. Like, they want all our love, our beloved things taken away. And, you know, now Malga releases and he's kind of OP and we're kind of always bouncing between these two states of, like, tanks are unkillable. They're, like, unkillable raid bosses. And then it's, like, supports are dominating the game and they never die and then you know occasionally we'll have like a sniper meta it's like well i i lose if i don't have a Widowmaker. is there like i'm mean, obviously the community is always going to complain but is there a healthier way to balance all of these like can we make suzu and anti-nade and immos a bit more engaging and, and can we make tanks feel killable but still strong as they were promised to be at overwatch 2 is there is there a world we can do this i think there is i think like making the cooldowns longer is like one of the problems like they should just make them shorter cooldowns with maybe just like a little less strength in them i think that's one way they could definitely go about it because every patch right it's just like on an aid cooldown goes up by one second uh suzu goes up by a second immortality field being like 20 something seconds like what if they were just weaker but had a shorter cooldown that way you're like you're more engaged more actively like doing something in the fights other than you know just healing and clicking um but I, I, I'm I'm still a believer that they haven't hit supports hard enough, and I know a lot of support players are going to like that. But I, I play, like, all the roles, and so I know firsthand that, like, I haven't even played tank that much, that just more fun and just, like, more rewarding overall. So, yeah, that's that's about what I got. Yeah, and you, yeah, before anyone labels that accusation, you know, you hit, like, top 500 on, like, all these roles all the time, and, you know, you grinded Iliari for a long time. So you, it's not, this is not a, a tank bias, this is your experience, correct? Like, just from playing yeah. the roles. Yeah, yeah. I probably played tank the least in Overwatch 2, to be honest. I think I'm starting to catch up on the other, like, DPS and support combined. I think I'm starting to play more of the, that than tank at this point. Which also is is your position, Boger, where you've kind of spent the majority of the last few seasons playing support now. Like, is there a, a way where, where we balance these considerations? You said this, like, tank as Malgo was, like, the first time you had fun playing tank in a while, but... Do we? How do we make it so like less people are unhappy? 
I think support is piss easy, and I think support players that complain are fucking stupid. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am. That is my honest to god opinion. I am sorry to everyone. I don't know why support players complain. It is fucking crazy. I queue up Kiriko on my main account. I am. I have not played Kiriko in my life. I swear. I just shoot in a random direction. I get a qu uh, four kills. It is. What the fuck is this character, right? Like, uh, is she OP or anything? Maybe a little bit. I think Ana is really good. I think Ana is played often because it's just a really fun character to play. Also counters some t characters like Mauga and Roadhog, so I think that's why. But Lari, Baptiste, Kiriko, what the hell is going on there? I These characters are so piss easy. It is instant value. I I queue up against Cloudy. I don't lose the game because Cloudy outplayed me. I lose the game because the enemy team picked the correct support characters and know how to play the support characters. I am... I've played support a lot. I've barely played tank. And tank sucks. Like, I'm not saying tank sucks, like, uh, in the sense that he's just weak. He's just, it's just the gameplay in itself is just so boring to play tank because you need to either play Sigma or play something else. And you can't really, you know, play really aggressively. And you need to play around your supports and you need to swap and counter swap. I don't like that gameplay. I think it's boring. I can pick Kiriko. And it's going to work in every situation. I can pick Lari. It's going to work in every situation. I can pick Baptiste. It's going to work in every situation. I can just go around. And if I want to turn off my brain and just click buttons and win games, I go support. I, I can say that because I've been playing support the last six months. I've played all the characters. Uh, I don't really like Life Weaver, though. There's some things I would like to be changed for them. But I like him. I like him because he's different. I like him because he's different. Because... It's a different type of gameplay. You don't queue up Life Weaver and just win the game because you out DPS the enemies. But you queue up Life Weaver and you win the game because you outbrain them. That's why that's fucking awesome. That's fun. There is no in Overwatch 1, there were so many interactions where you had to outbrain people and it made it really fun. So with Cassidy uh fucking flash, right? You when you're Genji and you try to one v one him, there's a lot of mind games. You know, like, I'm gonna throw my, uh, I'm gonna deflect the the flash, but then he's gonna flash under my leg, so I'm gonna play around that. And same with Rhine Shield, right? You can outplay him. All right, Winston Bow with nades, Diva Matrix with grabs. There's so many fun interactions. It made the game really interactive. Now it's like I throw nade, I throw Suzu. Game over. GG. That's it. You know, like I go in with Kiriko, I hit two shots in the head. It's GG. It's over. Magnetic grenade. I throw a grenade in the general direction of the Winston. He's stuck. He's dead. Go, GG. It's over, right? There's no counterplay. It's so annoying, right? So, I'm sorry again to support players. A lot of people are going to hate me. This role needs some changes or other roles need changes. Like, I, I'm okay with support being really strong, but other roles need to be strong as well, right? I think support is stronger than the other roles, and I'd much rather have every role be fun and OP. Maybe people would disagree then make support really weak and then have all the roles be really boring and weak, right? So that's my opinion, and uh, that's what I think. Now, uh, Sam, obviously, this this almost feels like a perfect setup for you in some ways, and I got I got a Hawk in there in chat right now, and he's like, yo, the, yo this is, he's speaking some truth We're right talking, now. He's, he's, talking there, he's, talking he's on the, he's on to something right now. I mean, I, uh, one thing I will say is that, you know, uh, you, you're free to go off on the, this is a 6v6 problem if you want to. But another thing I will say is that, as Boger points out, a lot of the way things have been balanced in Overwatch 2 has been to often just remove counterplay out, out of them, right? To remove the ability for them to be worked around. And I, I, I feel this most pressingly against, this is why I, I hate Hog right now, right? Because I feel like they, what they did, to balance him, they were like, Let's make it so that nothing he does can be countered, right? Like, he, his vape can't be interrupted. His ult can't be interrupted anymore. So this is, like, no way to actually get at this hero anymore. And that th in their way, like, this is balanced now, right? This is... We balanced him because, hey, you were having trouble getting naded you while you're vaping. A weakness as a tank. Yeah, you can't right. have weakness as a tank when you're the solo tank. Or you'll never get picked over the other tanks that don't have weaknesses as those things. Right. Where'd all and the interactions go? But this is I true of other heroes too, right? This is true of other heroes too. Like the, the yeah, Magno Bang again, so much harder to dodge. The Kiriko mm -hmm. example is like, what is the counterplay to, to Suzu or to teleporting through a yeah. wall? Like there, there is none. So yeah. go ahead in the direction so, you feel so it's wait, leading. Wait, wait, which part did you want me to answer the most there? Whatever you feel is like most pressing. Like what do you think is actually what it all boils down to? Is it a dev? Like could they make it so it's not... Could they make it so they're no. not always removing counterplay? Or is it just, is this a fundamental issue you still believe? It's 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 not all a fundamental issue. Like there are some things that they could probably do better of, like actually like adding legitimate counterplay to. Like Boger's on the money here completely. 
um, before we before I go into specifically how he's on the money with like how interactions work with counterplay and like that that those kind of well I guess I'm gonna go into it like those matchups like Genji versus Cass like how you could try to output the nade that was so much fun that's what made the game so beautiful is that you know there weren't overrides right like Ryan's with Sha both of them having shatter there was no way to override that right walking up like everything you did walking up to the fight to preserve your shield which corner am I walking up where's their off tank stuff like that where. It was all to set up the, the mind game of, of how that exchange could happen. And there were almost infinite options, it felt like, which is e even in GOAT's meta, too. Like, it didn't matter the meta. If it was Ryan v. Ryan, there was those mind games always. And, like, that's why it, there's almost an unsung saying with Ryan players about, you know, how they'd set up shatters or the different styles of shatters that people always used to meme about, right? Uh, and, and that's so much fun, and the game used to have a lot of that. Um, but specifically, I think in the tank role specifically... It's caught like them having to cover up issues and remove counterplay is caused by format. I think most of the time you look at tanks because again, if that tank wants to be a competitive pick, it can't have a lot of weaknesses or else it will just be overshadowed by something else when it's competing with every other hero just for one spot. But if it could fill into the spot, you'd have a lot more chances to actually keep that play in the game. But when it comes to support and I want to give Blizzard credit. I, I do think supports are too strong, but what they have done a good job of doing is making it so that you can pick any support and get value a lot of the time, right? And that's a good goal to aim for in the game, and I think if you look at what people were saying beta 1, making support approachable probably was the number one goal the team had, and they definitely did that. I think there's a way where you can back off the reins a little bit and have it not come at the expense of particularly the tank players who feel it the most. Like it's annoying as DPS, like in Metro's videos where Kiriko can take a Kiriko can take a duel at zero risk. It doesn't matter what the situation is. What's dumb, like like this is the classic. This, this is where I'm gonna call out sport players, and you guys can't gaslight me either because I played Brigand freaking contenders. I played on in, in that meta too, and my highest peak in this game is on support. Okay, so don't even give me this stuff. I'm just gonna come for you guys right now. Support players are the biggest gaslighters in the community. Okay, these people for years have done nothing but avoid the point. Over and over and over again, and it is so annoying to see. And I saw it happen with Metro, where they they try to get. Listen, I started the war against Moira. I walked so all you baiters could run. Okay, and I did. I they 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 crucified me for that. But I'm glad to see you all fighting the good fight. But the, the issue, it, it, it's so annoying to see these Twitter debates. And I'm just gonna go into the drama for a second, where Metro makes a point, and then. He's like, hey, you know, these waffles aren't made right. You're, you're, you're at Waffle House, right? And they're making all kinds of pancakes. Oh, this is about to be one of my best analogies ever. You're at Waffle House. You, you, you Brits might not, or Europeans might not know what Waffle House is. God bless you if you don't. You're I, America, I can put two you, and two together. Waffle yeah, in the yeah. house. I got you. Waffle I got you. House. No, but you got to understand a lot of crazy things happen. If you ever end up at a Waffle House in Florida, be careful. That's all I'm going to say. But, you know, it, it's, it, Metro says, hey, it's dumb that she can TP through the walls, right? Hey, these waffles aren't made right. And then they come over, okay, oh yeah, well, the pancakes are right over there. And they'll point to something that has nothing. Oh, well, Metro, you were dueling in their spawn. Yeah, he was. But the Kiri got to take the duel at no risk while he's committing risk by being there. And if you're a good player, you have to learn how to assess risk to reward. And what made the most interesting Overwatch players so interesting and fun to watch is that some of the best players, I think DeFran to name one of them way back in the day, the way that the stuff that he used to do, dude, in like season four, nobody's seen that before, right? This dude would be running into their spawn 1v6ing a soldier. Like, no one, no one was doing that, right? Was it a dumb duel? Yeah, but because he was so talented, he actually won those duels, right? And that made the game interesting to watch. And there weren't any heroes that could just get around that. Until they started adding these support heroes. And all the support players never want to address the fact that they can take the duels for free a lot of the time. And just TP out. They have the override buttons. The issue is not how you're using it. It's why should you be able to do so in the first place. And that's why SVB on the previous group up, I brought up Kiri TPing through walls. And I, and of course, and, and Daniel talked me off of it a little bit. And I was like, alright Daniel, you're right. She's got a negative win rate. I think this is stupid. But then they buffed her heal travel time and a couple other things too. And so I still think that it's really dumb. And I still think support players are the biggest gaslighters. I just went on a massive rant about it. But Metro was right. 
the supports have these kinds of abilities, I think Overwatch would benefit more from the developers tr peeling back on support just a little bit. Just a little. It doesn't need to be a whole lot from this point, right? Does Nate shouldn't get changed. A couple of things others shouldn't get changed. But find a way to make DPS and tank as approachable as the support cast. That's what I think they've done a 10 out of 10 job on. Like, you can almost play any support anywhere. And that's why people enjoy playing support so much, because there's never a moment where you're like, you just feel overwhelmed and the game feels like complete doo-doo. You can pick anything to anything. And that's, and that's good on their part. Yeah. Fair. Thank you for that uh, wide-ranging, emphatic statement there. Yeetle, I'm going to let you respond because we've had some passionate takes there from Boger and Yeetle, uh, Boger and Samito. Do you have any uh, anything you want to add or anything that you really resonated with? Yeah, just continuing that last part of like how they made they nailed support, but uh, tank and DPS don't exactly like have it. I think a part of the reason why you can like play any support and not really have as much of a problem is just because like they're they're a lot more like flexible in a way, right? Like. What are you going to do to counter a Kiriko? What are you going to do to counter, like, an Ana? Yeah, you can dive her, but the Ana can also just play further away. Like, there, there's a way to just make it so that they're they're not as, like, one-dimensional and easy to just, like, oh, okay, I'm going to swap to this hero, and that's it. That that Ana is done for, that Kiriko's done for, that Baptiste is done for. I think it, it stems something from, like, how flexible the uh, the support heroes are. So I'm not really sure, but they could definitely translate that somewhere into tank and DPS. I think it's just the flexibility and the, the, the ability to outplay. There's a lot of outplay potential as a support. So I, I think that's what it is. And the passive. I think the passive makes it feel so good. Mm. I'm going to keep talking about that passive. That passive is honestly, I don't listen. I'm not a fan of passives, but if supports have the passive ability to heal, DPS should get the same one. All can we, oh wait, can we actually just give DPS a passive? I don't think they have one. What is their passive even? It's reload speed. That's Who it. Who the yeah, fuck cares about reload? Hondo, like, Hondo what? They don't have a yeah. passive. At least Hondo still good. doesn't reload. He never reloads, so he doesn't even have a passive. So let DPS heal. Listen, that, that's what I'll say. Fine. Okay, supports, you guys want to stay strong? Okay, let DPS regen. Tracer will be perma played. Like, you know, it's that, that's how strong let, it is. I think they if could, you let, bro, if you gave them that, it would be crazy. On DPS, it would yes. be nuts. Yeah, it would it'll be. be and that, that, that's my point. It, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's why support feels so busted. Ask yourself this. If you gave DPS the support passive, how busted would it be? Can we give it to uh, tanks as well? Give it to everybody. <laughs> give it to no, Actually, de give it to everybody if you want them to be even. And the game might, I'm, you know, I'm really curious what would happen. I'm not Can saying I, I don't like passives, just to be clear. I think if a hero needs a passive, it should be specific. But that would be a crazy, like, thought experiment to just see happen. If everybody could, that, that could be a, a gauntlet challenge for you, SVB. Can we just remove Maybe. passives? I, I want to, I want to. Yeah, I mean, we just remove them. <laughs> I don't see, we, like, tanks getting boo plus, whatever. I'm ready to sacrifice that. Or, okay, maybe. True. Okay, actually, <laughs> I, I, I like actually, boops, though. I like No, boops. no, okay, okay. I don't, Lucio. I don't think they should remove the thing where you charge less from tanks, because Malga, for example, charges so, so fast, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. and it's just purely from the tank. It's crazy. Okay, maybe keep that, but remove everything else. Fuck it. Let the tanks get booped. I don't care. I'm... I'm ready to sacrifice that. You know sitting there, sitting there like, you, you know, SK and Frogger are sitting yes. there like, oh. yes. The return I, to I, Lucio. I played Lucio today. You can't boop tanks. It's, yeah, it's actually, yeah, yeah. I, under, I actually understand them now. You actually can't boop them at all. It's insane. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I no. love how we went from everybody gets the, the passive to nobody gets the passive now. Yeah. <laughs> Co the, communism, the communism intensifies, brother. Like we, we all, we all win or we all lose. Like it's how it <laughs> be. Carl Marx is out there. Like my legacy has been carried on. You know. No, I mean, oh, I, I, I do agree with that as sentiment as well. Like I do I, on the boop thing. I, I, I felt this where it's like there's just you just you can't boop them anymore. And I, I understand. Again, it's like when we or on and certainly most of us criticize some of these design elements. They're not necessarily to say. That these were always wrong and always stupid and the devs are dumb for implementing them. At Launcher Wars 2, it seemed like a good idea. Everyone was like, yeah, like, the tanks should be boopless. Because we anticipated that there was going to be a lot of pressure and a lot of shit being thrown into tanks. In reality, it's not the boops that really are the killer. It's just the mass amounts of crowd control that, uh, otherwise, right? The, the stuns and the slows. It's not actually, like, getting booped, yeah, would suck. But I think you're in less situations now where the booping is a, is a real occurrence anyways. Like, this is more like these fringe situations where you get on certain maps and you try to make a play as like a Lucio or somebody and you're like, I'm going to knock this tank off and then 
You like boop them and they like barely move an inch and they come right back at you and they I slap mean, you. I mean, compare loose your boop to Zen kick boop. Right. Zen Zen yeah, kick boop's yeah. crazy. Like, what yeah. what the hell is going there? Loose your boop boops. Like, if Zen can boop more than loose your, what the hell are we doing? Like, give them the boop. It's fine. I agree. I agree. Uh, Yil, any thoughts? Did you guys say Lucio was more fun in Overwatch 1? I think Lucio's yeah, fucking that? dog shit right now. I'm sorry for swearing, but I think it's okay. horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I've for swearing, guys. I'm sorry for my French, but I think <laughs> Lucio is absolutely horrible right now, right? Hmm. I, I said it. Maybe in pro play, he's fine. He's always been good in pro play, but I, I'm talking about ranked, right? If I get a Lucio in my team, I'm ready to ult F4 yep. 90% of the time. I, I think he's, like, suffered from, like, the outdated thing like i i think he could still be like a, a strong pick but he's not a fun pick similar to ball and I'll, I'll explain why because one so a lot of the supports now will just straight up win the 1v1 you got kiri you got Lari, they'll just two tap you the the support passive as well so you can't poke them out then go for the engage on the supports because they'll just get the healing and then to top it all off um I just had a brain for it, so I, I forgot what I was going to say, but yeah. The boop, <laughs> I mean, the boop, the boop, the boop and ball as well. You were going to say the boop and yeah, ball, the boop, presumably. Yeah, the boop. That's what it was. Yeah. So it's it not, just... It, go ahead. Hey, let him finish. No, no, no you got you got No, no, you go. No, you, no, no, I'm, you, good, you, I'm, you, good, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. You got Well, so this is a, a theme in general I've noticed in Overwatch 2. One, it's because there's one less player, but two, again, we talked a little bit about this earlier in that, you know, a lot of those counterplays and big, big exchanges are just kind of getting overridden. You know, I think Ball and Lucio are very similar in that they won a ton of games in Overwatch 1, especially on the right maps, by getting big boops, multi-boops on Lee Zhang Garden, right? Where when there were two tanks that both could actually get booped, th those were two more instances that Lucio and Ball as well on the right maps had to displace or just get, get you could get a fight win by the ability to look for those engages that like they just don't exist in this game. Not, not to the degree that they did before where, it's, you know, when you were playing as Lucio or Ball on Legion Garden, for example, you know, they, there was a chance that you had six players coming across a bridge or walking across to that one side of point that you could boop any one of them and get a big advantage with, right? Yeah. Now, like, that just won't happen because both tanks aren't boopable. And in order to compensate for one tank, most supports have a mobility ability that would save them that they didn't have in Overwatch 1 or new character design, right? Like Kiriko, even if you get the boop, she can TP away. So I think those opportunities just simply aren't there. Um, and that's just a part, a byproduct of the new game. To be fair, another aspect of that would just be the change of the maps. Like one of the, one of the mm -hmm. most frequent areas would be 2CP for something like what you're mm -hmm. talking about, where there's a lot of entrenched positions, right? Like Anubis, I remember Yeadle used to love that map on ball. And oh. it's just like, it's because you can, yeah. because you know, they're going to be do. set up here. So you can go around in a certain way. I knock them off here and now I've, I've done what I needed to, or they're going to go through this choke coming through attack. And I'm going to just knock them as they're coming in. And now they're like, you know, so that I think that 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 is where like a tactical element was lost in favor of the more FTS element of like everyone's everywhere and flanking. Whereas what we see in some ways, what we disliked about 2ZB was that like it's it's just people setting up a bunker on a certain spot is also what allowed these tactical elements to exist. Is that is that a fair statement? You know, yeah, for sure. I fuck. I miss Anubis. <laughs> I wish they'd bring it back. Anubis is great. Put me on yeah. Junkrat. Oof, that, was a flex, that was a flex DPS player's dream map, dude. Do you remember playing Doomfist on that map or Junkrat on that map with a trap on the right? I know my buddy Razor's freaking out right now. He's like, dude, put me on Junkrat on that map. Put me on JSIL. Good times, man. Good times. I mean, Boger, you, <laughs> do you have any thoughts on this? I mean, you've said so far you're you kind spin? of switched. Yeah, you're Switzerland at the moment. You said you're like, I'm Switzerland 66, 5v5. And like, you know, we're, there's a danger of us nostalgizing too heavy about the good old days of Overwatch 1, but... Are you okay with like losing these elements for what 5v5 has brought? I think I think like there was a lot of issues with 6v6 that people just forget about and uh there was a lot of annoying aspects, right? I, I don't think it was perfect. I don't think 5v5 is perfect. I think it's like matter of preference really. I see the good and the bad in both. Like I see what we lost when we got 5v5, like what Smith was talking about. I do miss these aspects a lot. But uh, there was a lot of annoying aspects in two, in six v six, and you know, I I see why people enjoy both parts. So I don't really take sides in it because I I get both points, right? Uh, I feel like supports definitely are having way more fun now with five v five. Um, I think DPS players. I don't know what the fuck is happening with DPS. I think DPS sucks. I'll be honest. I I think the role <laughs> just kind of sucks. I like it's just so boring. It's like either kill the tanks or get giga pocketed and one shot everything and it's just like whatever boring 
but um QCP um I, I this QCP was kind of boring some maps in QCP were boring I like Vulskaya I always liked Vulskaya people would disagree I think Vulskaya was really good Paris was really bad I think Horizon was kind of okay depends what comp you played I feel like if you touched up the maps a bit you know you changed like they changed Gibraltar I don't think anyone would say that Gibraltar changes were bad nobody has ever said that I think the things they changed with the map were really good and somebody who loves Gibraltar I think everything they did with Gibraltar was great and uh, they made the map a lot more fun so I feel like if they touch up the 2CP stuff make it you know the same idea with uh, how they touched uh, Gibraltar like the main issue with 2CP is most of the time you had one choke point you go through, right? So Hanamura for some first point. You could go through the window and stuff, but that depends on the character you play. And you just had you were kind of forced to go down the same choke and it was really sucked because if the enemy team played high damage comps, you have to really struggle to organize your team to go through the choke and do things. So that sucked. So if they allow more ways to enter, change up some stuff. And I feel like it could be really refreshing and really awesome for the community to get back those maps. And because uh, it's like one, two, three, four, like five maps or something, four or five maps. And people are going to be like, I bet a lot of people are going to come back just to play Hanamura or Sky again or Anubis again. And it's going to be hype. And having five more maps in the pool is going to be great. Awesome stuff. That's my opinion. The conversion has begun. Sam, is Real. this, is this uh... brainwashing from Samita? Yeah, well, I, I was never so. I've always been kind of neutral on 2CP. Like, I remember when people were saying to remove it, I was like, uh, sure, I guess. You know, I was more so looking forward to push. Um, but no, I mean, I, I think 2CP can work. I think it had a lot of strategy, allowed for a lot of styles of comps to get played that you don't see elsewhere. And I, well, Sky was one of my favorite maps. Like, I was an OG Hanzo player. Like, maps like that were really, really good for ult combos and Grab Dragon and a couple other ones, right, that were Hanzo was great for. Like, Volskaya was one of Hanzo's best maps. Like, some of the most classic games that I loved were on Volskaya. Or Anubis was great for Doomfist and Junkrat, right? So, really, and Hanamura is great for Torb. So, really, 2CP was kind of the only format, now that I think about it, that was good for my role in, in Flex DPS. Like, that was the only time you, you really saw projectile heroes get played consistently. Even Pharah on first Hanamura, right? Um, I get why people didn't like it. I do, 100%. Um, but I wouldn't be against seeing it again. You know, that's, that's just me. I was never, before people were like, oh, these streamers are so hypocrites. I was never on the anti-2CP train. I was like, okay, sure. Like, I, I'm in I was. I hate 2CP. The, I just yeah, wish they the, changed them up a bit. Like, I don't know. They just yeah. kept, they Some said they're going to change up change. Paris, but they never changed it. They just removed it. Same with Horizon. Yeah. Well, well, they, no, they changed, they changed Horizon, but it didn't. Yeah, but they ahead. removed they it. They tried it, but they yeah, they removed yeah, it again. It was the issue was point one, right? The issue was really point one and how hard it is to make those wraps against those bunker comps. But I do like to be honest, I did I did like the strategy. I did like playing dive. The, the real issue and why people hated it so much is that the bunker comps got so broken and they were never nerfed properly. That's that's why. The, the, well, wow, it went bad after BAP got put in the game. I wonder why. It's like, oh, wow, you dive them, and even if they misuse everything, oh, MO, it's fine. Can we rant about Baptiste Lamb, and why the hell is that ability so, still a thing after three, four years or whatever? Like, I... Listen, Nate will get is, reworked first. I don't understand why Baptiste Lamb keep get, keeps getting you know no changes like it, it either gets like small buffs or like nothing changes or like plus two se a cool, uh, seconds to the cooldown or something it's like who the hell care i hate that baptiste has free health bars what what the it's like a boss. You go into Dark Souls and then <laughs> you go into Dark Souls and the boss arena opens up. And it's like, it's not like fucking Godric or whatever. It's it's literally Baptiste the Unkillable, right? You go in, he one-shots you across the map. You get him to zero HP almost and then heals up to full instantly. And then you almost kill him again. Then he puts a lamb down. And you're like, okay, cool guy. You can't dive the character. It's ridiculous. I hate that character so much. Oh, but takes, but sorry. Boger, you've gotten value out of baiting the cooldowns out. That's what your whole awesome. life should your yes. whole life should revolve around baiting out a couple you, cooldowns. You just can't one v one the character. You can with uh, Malga, God forbid. But yeah. uh, but you can't like Winston. Just dive the Baptiste. Yeah, just dive him. I'm gonna dive him. Sure, it's really awesome. Great. I think and there's I no think... option there. To to yeah. add on to what we said earlier, SVB. Remember how you talked about like the exchange and the mind games of it all. Right, I we I think people in general want to see less abilities like that, where it's like, hey, there's no mind games here. It's this is an override. That's why it's be so fresh. I, I feel like it'd be so frustrating to see on a nade get nerfed, 
because while it is super, super strong, and we talked about this earlier, like it doesn't completely stop your ability to make a decision. Like you could still get value if you were committed to something. Is it going to be harder and way riskier? Yes. But the fact that that could get changed before BAP MO, which completely overrides Suzu, which completely overrides, that's not that mind game of Overwatch that made playing tank in Overwatch 1 fun for a lot of people. But now you see it, a lot of these people going to support where it's it just gets the most value. It's, it's, the, it's such a chill role to play. It really is just, a, just such a chill role to play. I, I want to take it back to another thing you guys mentioned on that whole 2CP issue of like, well, you know, the streamers change their minds, hypocrites. I, I, I just want to like, so it's mini rant a little bit about the lack of flexibility that people give to just having an opinion. Because obviously, like whether this is for us or whether it's for the devs, things change in ways we didn't anticipate, right? Like variables occur and the game changes, heroes release, and we discover what we thought was going to happen isn't what actually happens. And it's okay to change your mind. Like I think one of the most frustrating things is that people feel like they have to be locked into a certain opinion forever because they once believed this thing or because they are like, I'm a support player, so I have to, you know, always defend the supports or I'm a tank player, so I always have to defend the tanks. Where it's like, the devs, I think, I applaud them for acknowledging that they were like, you know, Jared was very candid. And he's like, we were naive. We thought we could make a game without hard counters, but actually, no, we just can't. We have a game where you swap and there's so many heroes that have unique abilities. So we can't, we'd, we'd rather not, basically between the lines, what he was saying is we don't want to sacrifice that. We don't want to make our heroes not unique and not have them have cool abilities. So that means something has to be lost and that means there's going to be some hard counters in this game. And even though I may not like Counterwatch as a fundamental approach to Overwatch, I can respect that. I can respect that they take that opinion. They're like, look, we were wrong on that. And I think, I think more of us sh should show that openness to be like, look, we thought you know, tanks would work less, like we did with the passive, right? We thought maybe we would need the boop resistance, but actually I don't think tanks need the boop resistance. And we maybe thought the supports needed the self-healing, but I don't think they need the self-healing. And maybe, maybe, I'm not saying we are or we aren't, but maybe we've reached the point where like, well, actually maybe we can bring 2CP back. What everyone hated about 2CP was the full stacking bunker comps that just spammed and you had to like, it was impossible to break them and you couldn't, there was only one choke as you guys have mentioned, like there was only one choke to come through. If you just add a second entrance and now bunkers don't bunker comps don't really exist in Overwatch 2. So well you're not gonna you're not gonna face the same problems. Maybe it's worth experimenting again, right? We don't know, but it's worth opening up the idea that maybe we were wrong. All of us or some of us were wrong. And we, we might the situation has changed and we can figure out a new solution. Yeetle, do you have any thoughts on any of what was mentioned, whether that's this idea about two CP? Or if you want to rant about BAP MO, you can go. You can go for a bit. What what is on your yeah. mind? I mean, I'm I'm on the train of of Nade and uh, you know immortality and even cleanse all being hit at the same time. I'm I've been for that. I think I think they all need to get hit. Um, so that's my take on that. And as for two CP, like I think it's just a shame that that it's been put on the shelf. You know, like a lot of it just comes down to. I think it's the stall fest on second point and like the approachability of some maps. Like I remember Anubis as like a really good map minus when people ran snipers. That was always rough. Um, just because like on second point, you had so many options. You can go main, you can go left side, you can go left side down to the mega, or you can go right side. You had so many options to approach second point. But you think of like Hanamura second point, that shit was hell. Like main's pretty much not an option because you're on terrible low ground versus three different high grounds. And then it's basically only go top and top just this narrow little corridor where once again they both they still have high ground they have middle high ground and then top right high ground so i think that was just hanamore was just a bad map uh, design for second point um but overall like we kind of have like one cp if you think about it hybrid it's capture the first point so i think they just have to nail the second point for two cp i i hope to see it come back one day but um of course when it's good and better i think it was good that it was gone from the get-go of overwatch 2 though because like and where it was i could see that being very frustrating for new players so yeah yeah i agree i think it was a good decision to take out when they did but yeah and then maybe maybe it's open to consideration and bear in mind we will be getting five cp coming up oh yeah in the in the next year like the devs have already announced this at like a five cp mode is 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 upon us so maybe that will give us more insight as well into how if a two cp was to come back and of course we're getting a budget Hanamura, right? We're getting like Hanamura Hanaoka, right? It's like they're they're reworking Hanamura into Hanaoka. So we will get we will get to see these things. So may, maybe that is the other way. Maybe rather than going back to 2CP, all the 2CP maps can become 5CP. <laughs> Just add three more. 
and see what we can do with them. So there, there's options there. Anything else you guys want to add about these topics that we've discussed before we move on to talk about like some of the more current events like Winter Wonderland stuff? No? We good? Anyone say anything about hero bands? Has that been talked about before on the, the no, podcast? No, no, actually hasn't because we, we don't really have too many details of what their plans are, but I'm happy to go into it a little bit. Obviously, we've had we've had a dedicated podcast on the idea of hero bands, okay. uh, but we haven't had a specific discussion since the devs have announced that this is an idea they're experimenting with. And I think another interesting tidbit that I was able to get from, from Jared is that they are very open to fundamental changes to Overwatch. You know, they're, they're looking at these things all the time. Like they're not wedded to the idea that Overwatch is and will play in a certain way. Like, obviously, we've seen some versions of this with, like, the quick play respawn thing, right? Like, how you respawn quicker with your team uh, in quick play. So they're not averse to these ideas. So, Yidl, go ahead and lead me into, like, what, what made you bring up the idea of hero bands and, like, what, what, what is, what's on your mind? Yeah, personally, I think I think the game's gotten to that point where we could benefit from hero bands just because, like, I think of the matchup for, for example, Malga versus Winston. Like, that's going to always be a specific matchup because you got Malga, the tank buster, with basically two Bastion turrets on his arms versus Winston. So, like, if you're a Winston main and you don't want to go against that, you can tell your team in the in the pregame, yo, let's ban Malga. I don't, I don't want that. I'm a Winston one trick. And I, I feel like that adds just a little bit more to the game. I, I think we're at that point. What do you guys think? Bogar, I'll take it to you next. I'm okay with hero bands as long as we don't let Zoe's cat choose them for us. <laughs> then I'm okay with it. Because, uh, I don't know. I I feel like the the game is going to have way more characters. It's going to be way harder to balance everything. For example, imagine right now if you had hero bands. Even if it was like one band per team. Malga wouldn't be dominating every lobby because everyone would be permanent banning Malga. And that's what happens in League, for example. Everyone just bans the newest character because it's really OP most of the time. So nobody plays the character and uh, because it's really, you know, broken. And, the, and at the same time, you can see if the character is broken and adjust him without him ruining the game for everyone else, right? That's why I feel like, I, I don't know, for me... I would like to test the idea. Why not? You know, next season we change competitive. The season after that, you know, they release a new character. And then the season after that, they add hero bands and test it out. And if it doesn't work, remove it. Because I feel like League and other games, you know, experiment a lot with things. They change up their maps a lot. They add a, new, a lot of new stuff. And Overwatch, we don't really experiment much. We just release characters and battle passes and new maps. I feel like adding more uh, things that really shake up stuff. Uh, would make the seasons more memorable. Obviously, it's more work. It's not easy to do that. But uh, at least once a year, right? Just, you know, add items. That would be funny. Imagine if they add items to Overwatch. I don't know. Fucking something random, right? Add 6v6 again for a season. I don't know. Just something <laughs> silly. I don't know. I, I, I feel like the game uh, is very... Uh, I don't know. I, I Back in the day, Overwatch was really silly with a lot of things, right? And I miss a lot of the silliness with... Uh, before Rolog, before all, all of these things, Bastion sitting in Sentry form, uh, Symmetra uh, Ultimate Shield Generator with Torbjorn packs and plus 150 HP and so many silly stuff. We don't really have silly stuff. It's all about like who can deal more damage and it's kind of boring. So I do wish they experimented more with hero bands and other stuff and make seasons more memorable and um, just make it more unique. I don't know. Like add hero bands. Why not? If it doesn't work, remove it. Awesome. Well, obviously, we, you know, I agree with you that it was there was that there was that fondness of that era where things were a bit silly or a bit goofy. Unfortunately, the more we min max the game, the more that becomes the death of silliness, right? The more we establish a pro scene, the more we have people who are like hard grinding or watch night and day and want to figure out within two days what is the best thing to do in any given situation. Like, it will be the death of the silly. But to the uh, original point, Sam, uh, we've also like they, they one thing they mentioned was that they might have this idea of like coins or some currency that you can use to swap and it's like a limited resource, right? Like you can only swap an X number of times. This is an idea they're experimenting with internally. Is that a, a, a good idea or like hero bands are in total a good idea or how do you feel? So I, I've been on this podcast particularly where we've talked about hero bands many times. Frito... Frito, I know he's licking his chops somewhere right now. He just sneezed that I just mentioned him in Hero Bands. He definitely just sneezed. I've always been very neutral on it. I'll say I'm nervous, though. And here's why I'm nervous. After realizing what it feels like to have characters get locked, like playing on open queue on an alt with friends and stuff like that, 
I, I'm a little like I think a big part of what made Overwatch so fun and made it win game of the year and did all these things is kind of what Boger said. It's like ability to be unique, right? And we definitely lost that with uh, with we lost a little bit of that with Roll Queue, a lot of it with hero design and things, just uh, characters like OG Brig, Double Shield, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I'm nervous that it might get lost with these. I'm still open to seeing it though, and I I think there's a lot to be said about. Aaron and Jared and their team that they're willing to look at things fundamentally and mess around with things and try things as long as the response is quick to change them I'm totally okay with it I don't like the idea of limiting swaps in Overwatch any any more than we've already done right with heroes potentially being locked in general with roll queue first and then 5v5 I kind of do miss a lot of that silly old Overwatch where there are a lot of unique things out there and especially with the league being gone, I think there is, as to Boger's point, a great opportunity to do a lot more of that silly, open, crazy stuff. Like, you know, you guys used to see the videos of the meme stacks all the time, or like the Tim, Lasses, Seagull stack all the time, like doing crazy stuff. Or I had a video where we queued into Crow on our team once and with my five stack on East Coast, and we played five supports, one junk rat, and we won the game against Goats. Like, stuff like that. That wacky aspect of Overwatch is something I'm willing to admit I was wrong about, I think, with, with Roll Queue in general. And while I'm I'm definitely open to hero bans coming in, I think it should be a, a ban for each team or maybe one character ban and don't limit the swaps past that point. Because I like Overwatch feeling free. And my hot take is if we're stuck in 5v5, I'd rather play open queue. That's my hot take. That's my book. Get, get, do a one week open queue season or a one week 6v6 season and a downtime or something. Who cares, right? Um, I, 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 I'm not, I don't know if I'm 100% ready to admit that I think I might have been wrong about roll queue versus open queue. But I think, particularly at this point in time with no league, if you want depth in the game or you want to do something, just do something fun with it for a weekend or something. Who cares, right? Something like that. Um, but I, I do, I don't want to lose that wacky free open Overwatch feeling that I feel like I haven't really been able to get from Overwatch 2, aside from playing maybe some characters like Echo, who are more free to fly around the map because there's one less tank checking her, right? Or something like that. I feel like, it, I, I don't want to lose that feeling any more than has already been taken away for the sake of structure, if you will. I, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think the open queue idea is fun one. I think like... If, if anything, it's going to show us how dead the DPS role is because there's going to be yeah. four support characters probably in a tank. But uh, So it was rem reminiscent of your Junkrat game there, Sam. I actually like... This may surprise people. This is a hot take from myself because for the longest time, I've been a huge advocate of hero bans. Like, you know, me and Frito from the go were kind of like hero bans, hero bans, hero bans needed in the game. I'm not sure it's needed anymore in the same way that it was before. Like, I, I think... The reason that hero bans always appealed to me as an idea is because Overwatch was so much about like alt economy and not swapping your hero for so long. Like I, whatever the devs may say, for so long Overwatch was about figuring out a comp that you needed to run and running that shit everywhere. And that's where you need hero bans to break up the hegemony, right? You need a hero ban to dislodge a key character in a comp that everyone's running all the time and say, take Brig out of this comp, now we can play five other things. And that's what always appealed to me as an idea of hero bans. Like, this is will give variance to a game that lacks variance. I don't think necessarily variance is so much of a problem anymore in Overwatch 2. If anything, it's over variance. And that's where actually I gravitate more towards the idea of limiting the number of swaps. Like, I think we're in a bit of a unique state where Malga is so busted that, like, everyone's running Malga. But past season 2 and 3, when they had, like, the hard Hog Arisa meta and Widow Hanzo... We've not seen too many moments where everyone's running the same thing everywhere, right? Like maybe that little moment where Junk Queen was busted. But even then you're seeing a lot of variance in like the supports and the DPS. So I don't think our problem anymore is that we need to break a certain comp that everyone's running all the time. Outside of pro level. Like pro level it's a it's a different story and you could easily add hero bands at pro level and it wouldn't wouldn't be a problem. But for the ranked experience, I think the idea of limiting swaps appeals to me more because it's more frustrating for me. To just see people constantly counterpick me, whatever I'm doing, right? Like, let's say I start Winston, they go Bastion, I switch to, you know, whatever it is. I switch to Hog, they're going to go try and stun me and, and lock me out. I'm going to go Doom, they're going to go Sombra, Orisa. So, like, I, I dislike the idea of, like, constantly just targeting a player and, and just trying to make their experience miserable. So, if you put a resource on the swaps, 
you're now asking someone to think about their swaps more rather than just brainlessly swapping all the time to counter the thing that's coming. It's like, now we got to weigh up. Is it worth swapping to, to counter the tank every single time? Or is there like a better thing to attack that will make us win the game more? So I actually... I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I'll ever be against the idea of hero bans because I do still think it adds something to the game. But my own feeling is like, I'm no longer such like a bring hero, we need hero bans to save Overwatch because I think the problems have shifted. And I'd rather first see them just limit the number of swaps. Sam, you've got your hands up. And then I want to hear Yidl's response because he's the one who asked the I question. I agree the problem has shifted, but I, now, when I think about it, I really don't like the idea of limiting swaps because in a way, you're also re lowering the skill ceiling of the game for certain players. Where like one of my better assets as a player is that I can pick almost, I can pick literally any DPS and depending on what's best in the situation and get an advantage because I've spent years playing the game and learning these characters, right? If you limit the swaps, I think you're I think you're better off trying to limit the niche situations that make people permanently swap. Oh, if they pick this, no matter what happens, I pick this because it's an override, right? That's caused by overrides, more of the overrides that we talked about earlier, where it's not about the mind games and all that stuff. I think you need to reduce those interactions of the game. But I don't think that, for example, a player like me, I don't think it's fair to a player like me, for example, whose main skill set is their flexibility to say, oh, well, you can only switch this much in one game because uh, somebody, this guy is constantly going bastion against the guy that really wants to play Winston, right? I, I don't like the idea of limiting player skill ceilings because of that. And that would absolutely be a big limit to the players who are much more flexible, who like, look, I'm not pressing tab and switching every life based on what uh, blah, blah, blah on the other team's doing. Like if there, there could be a lot of different reasons why I want to support. Like maybe one time one of their supports Goes Moira, but I started on Genji because they were on Bap, Zen, Ash, Hanzo, and Genji's not a bad matchup there. So then I swap off Genji, and I'm, you know, like, there have been plenty of games where I've swapped four or five times, and it's not because one I'm countering one player. It's just because, well, look, I don't think my ult's valuable here, and in this situation, this will be better. I, I, I don't think I, I don't like that. I'm gonna, I'm going. That, no, that's goal. totally fair. No, that's totally fair. I, I'll say a couple things to this, and I want to hear again. I want, especially Yudel's opinion of a Boger too, if he's got anything to add. The one, the, there's a couple points I'd, I'd, I'd rebut with, which is that, A, firstly, you're, it's, a, it's a finite resource that everyone's dealing with, right? So I appreciate that, like, you won't need to swap so much if everyone else is not swapping so much too, right? So, like, if they're only limited two or three swaps, how many times do you need to swap to adapt to that? B, you also, are, you're still going to be rewarded as a flexible player because you still have a wide wider range to pull from than everyone else who's limited to a fewer things. So... While, yes, you can't swap four or five times, you can still swap three key times, let's say, to any of the heroes, as opposed to, like, again, the ban situation. You can still swap to any of the heroes to fit the situation. And again, knowing that they only have a limited number of times they can change their comp, it affects what you want to do, too. And then three, yeah. I think the, the, the final thing, and then you can rebut, is that they've already acknowledged, they're, they, you know, that you said that, that we're going to have to shut down those niche situations of, like, where you, don't, you need to swap because they're running Bash into your Winston. Well, they've already kind of accepted that's going to be a thing. Like, obviously, we don't want that extreme a level of bashing. You just don't play Winston into bashing. It's just a useless. You're useless now. But that is going to be a thing. We They now acknowledge this. They're like, we know there's going to be some hard counters in the game. And I think it's, again, it's one of those situations, again, where it's more realistic to expect them to to fuck up frequently and have a few matchups like these in the game where, like, this character, you just, you're not going to, you need to swap off of this character then it is to expect and then have a limited number of times people can swap. Then to expect them to constantly have that balance right of there's never these situations where you need to swap off your character and let's let let's let people swap all the time. Does that make sense? Yeah, kind of. But I think what that would make... Ha I, I think that does the opposite of the goal of what the game wants to achieve and that I actually think it would be a similar situation and, and these guys might remember this, but you know when you were defending first on 2CP what you mainly looked to pick in in scrims was you wanted heroes that could get that could cover like any comp they ran right so like for example a lot of the time where people would there there are a lot of times where people come up on bat brig instead of bap zen on like for example 2cp first defense just in case they went dive into the bap zen and so you had to have the brig for coverage if you limit the amount of swaps people can have, I don't think that actually makes the game about how you play. And it's, I think it actually doubles down on how important what you pick is. And I'm nervous that that would lock people in 
and, and like ultimately like I'm still getting punished because it's not about how flexible I am. It's the order of operations as to, okay, well, we'll start Bap Zen. He's going to pick Genji because Genji's a good pick into that. Then I'm going to swap Moira. And then you end up getting stuck in this rock, paper, scissors, which I, I feel like we wanted to get away from, right? It's just, there's a limit on how many times it happens and it hasn't actually changed why it's happening, which is what frustrates people. It just puts a limit on how often it can happen. So there's a direct winner or loser, regardless of how wide your hero pool is. That would be my rebuttal to that. But again, I, we'd have to wait and see. I'm not sure how it would actually play out, but that'd be my guess. It's just a guess, though. No, those those are fair concerns, and I think I think it would, it might even be interesting to see how it's like a it's a meta game mind game of its own, which is like. Mm -hmm. Can I it force is. them to swap into a thing that they actually don't want to be into? Like, can I, because I know they have to swap a number of times. And I'm, again, if you're like a flexible player, you're like, I know what I'm doing. I want to kind of make them go into the thing. I, again, I, I think this is all theory crafting. It's hard to say because it's so dependent on like the power state of certain heroes versus other heroes. Like you have to, it, it, this, this premise is that like, it is such a strong need anyways. Like it, it may not be such a strong need that you have to swap. It's more just, I think for me, where the appeal of the idea lies is the, is particularly in the tank role of the constant swapping needs to stop. And can you, can stop. you make, what was that, sorry? It can't stop, not in this format. It's always gonna happen. I mean, maybe. we can try, but maybe. it's always gonna happen. All right, uh, I'll take it to Yield now. Yield, you asked the question, uh, what are your thoughts and were you satisfied with the discussion? Yeah, it was a good talk. I, I'm not convinced or sold on the, the, uh, the whole hero swap economy thing. I feel like that's, uh, not a very fun mini game, at least for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I still think like it would change up a lot of the games and like how maps are played. Like a prime example I always think of is no matter what role I'm playing, I hate playing against Widowmaker because I don't play Widowmaker. I'm not good at that hero. So if I can ban Widowmaker on Havana, all of a sudden that map's played a lot differently than it would be if there was a Widowmaker. Um, just another example, like we can say like uh, if I'm playing Malga and I just don't want to play against the Ana, ban the Ana, and then they have to be more creative about how they're going to counter me versus just picking Ana. Or it can go the other way. If you're tired of seeing Malga in all your games, you ban Malga, and it's like you get to, to curate the experience a little bit more is what I see as the appeal. That's all. No, you're never going to find me arguing against the idea of hero bans. So that's not, that's, yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy and agree with those ideas, but that's just my current feeling of like, maybe, maybe this would be all right. Boger, how do you feel about all of this? I feel like it's nice to believe that if we remove hero swaps, the game will be better. But the more time we've spent sitting there limiting our choices as players, the worse the game kind of has become in the sense that um, I don't, if like Overwatch was made with the idea of having hero swaps, and I feel like it will be really irritating if you remove hero swaps. It's really irritating as a tank player to get counter swapped all the time, but like, I don't think the solution is to remove hero swaps because like we're removing another thing that made Overwatch so awesome in the first place. Like the fact that you can hero swap is really unique. So I don't think removing it and the heroes, I don't think removing it is a good idea. And it's nice to think it might be a good idea, but just imagine you're playing the game and you get locked into a game and you play Winston and the enemy team locked in Malga and that is not going to be fun. It's just not going to be fun. It's going to be miserable. It's going to be so miserable. And it might happen many times in a row where you just pick the wrong character and you just lose, right? And I don't like that. And uh, I think there's more of a core issue where it needs to be solved with like hero swaps, uh, getting counter swapped all the time. I don't like the counter swap economy thing because imagine uh, a lot of situations in higher elo, you go Lucia to speed out spawn. That's minus one hero swap. Uh, you might go Symmetra, right? To TP people, minus one hero spawn. You might, you, might, uh, you might swap to Doomfist or Ball to contest last second, minus one swap, right? And uh, it, I, it sounds good on paper, but I don't think it solves anything because if you just like if every player has free swaps, if you start on Winston and they go on Zarya and then they swap from Zarya to something else and something else, at the end of the day, you just again like gonna keep counter swapping until you're locked from swapping and you might fuck yourself over and just have the most miserable game ever. I don't think we should make the game more miserable than this. Like, it's nice to imagine that it's going to make the game more playable. I think it's going to happen because a lot of things need to go perfectly. And I think like hero bands might be cool. I think hero swaps are a 
very important mechanic that if we remove, a lot of people are just going to quit the game, <laughs> like straight up. I think like, I think it's a very loud minority that think that we should remove hero swaps, and I think they're wrong. And uh, I think uh, we should keep hero swaps and just fix the issues where they are instead of trying to think about something else. Yeah, fair points, fellas. Fair points. You've you've kind of convinced me to think that this is maybe not so good an idea. I kind of I haven't. I confess I haven't given it too much thought. But hearing your arguments, I definitely think like the more I'm like, hmm, yeah, maybe it wouldn't solve the problems we think it would. So fair enough. Uh, any any thoughts, Yidl? Again, I'm going to get Yidl because it was his question and his kind of subject. So tell me what you uh, what you think of it all. Yeah, no, I think most of it's been said. Um, full out, no hero swaps. That's not good. But I think like one or two hero bands wouldn't be that bad. That's all. All right, fair. It, productive discussion. I think it was an interesting one. Um, all right, let's move on to then Winter Wonderland. It'll be like our last but rough big topic. Is just you know this is we haven't really even talked about the the sort of the, the what the season is supposed to be. It's supposed to be this winter themed season. It's supposed to be all fun and cheery. We've seen a few mini fracas, shall we say, a few mini skirmishes of like Jingle Bell Mercy not releasing on time and and some some talk about like this uh this Oops. mini battle pass uh and kind of the FOMO of not being able to get everything but how do you guys feel about the winter wonderland like i think i've heard a lot of people say like it's underwhelming sam you go ahead first like is it is it is it hitting the mark i got one thing that i want to say first and i'll let these gentlemen get into their opinions after can we just talk about how funny it is from an outsider looking in. Okay, this is this is where the saying "Oh, to be a fly on the wall" comes from, gentlemen. The fact that the poor Mercy players have had their skin delayed twice, and then just watching the uproar is so. I just went and grabbed my popcorn. All this stuff. Yes, he's having to, like a tweet out. I'm so, like she jinxed it, right? You know, that's so funny to me. I just thought it was so funny. But the good news is, listen, they all got their skins a, a, a week early. Did you guys know the tail on, on Jingle Bell Mercy? J Jingle Bell Mercy has a little deer tail on it, and it bobbles. I learned that. Hmm. Actually, Furry so Mercy you're, confirmed. You're, you're, I'm about to spend $30 to for a skin. Damn, that's a good yeah. deal. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Wait, Boger, real quick, before we get into this, did you see the account, the Mercy account, that was called Sumito yeah, X Boger? Yeah, you DM'd me about it. <laughs> Sumito X Boger. Or so, many people, so many people were mad about the way I played Mercy. It was really funny. Dude, like, same here. Oh, my God. KST uploaded a Vault review. KST uploaded a Vault review, and there was, like, this one comment. like, I used to like Boger, but he changed. He's... I got him in my game and he bullied me off Mercy. It was a terrible experience. And everyone was like, I'm so sorry to hear that. I was like, what what is this first story? What? <laughs> did you did what? you get yelled at for heal botting? No, because I didn't heal I got yelled out for He pissed all the time. I yeah. just pissed. I had like 2k average damage per 10. You, you know what's so funny, guys? I uh I made it a point to heal bot as much. I had 10k per 10 healing, and I had like all the people I know that play Mercy were so mad at me, and I, they're like, you're taking Nano away from your auto. I was like, why would I want the game in anyone else's hands but mine? That's the difference between I, I agree. And me. I, 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 just went I did the same thing. I was so tired. Like, I'm sorry to Mercy, man. I, you're very cute and awesome, but like, the amount of Mercy players that were in my stream explained to me how I'm supposed to play the game when they've been stuck <laughs> in plat for six years. It is so like I understand if it's Kiesti sitting there backseating, but but like, who who is this like uh Lou Kitten for, right? Like I like, <laughs> you've been you've been stuck on Mercy in Plat or Diamond for years. Maybe maybe pistoling with Mercy is the play, right? Like, maybe <laughs> maybe maybe you should change up your playstyle. I am I am rank eighty on Mercy right now, only basically pistoling, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know. Maybe it's time to change up how Mercy's play. I'm sorry about the round. SVB, you, you know earlier. Sorry to stay out. We'll get back on it's topic. All right, it's you know, all right. you, you remember, remember earlier how I how Boger talked about how he's gone over to support. You want to know how you know that's true? That was some of the best gaslighting I've ever seen. That was great. That was great, Boger. Good job, man. You're you're official. You, you I was a support man. I you're was a support man. man. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you know, Rack Attack somewhere grinning right now. Oh yeah, Rack Attack. Oh, he's, yeah. he's, he's done a great job with those too. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. back to the topic, SVB. I just wanted to say how funny it was that that the mercy the mercy tragedy happened yet again but they got their skin so there we go there we go it's um, true, it's as for true. winter wonderland i honestly don't know anything about it i'm just gonna I same i have no idea what's happening there i have no check though 
I, I eat those also. <laughs> you know you also no, the only thing I checked is I know that like to get a Ryan skin, you couldn't get enough tickets from like doing it free. That was something I think I noticed. Maybe I, I saw the you numbers can, wrong. But... but you just like I think you can do it if you're on the freemium pass, but then you can only get like one with the freemium, and like I think you can get like I'll three the with the premium. The premium is five dollars. So I think with five dollars you can get like three or four some like legendary skins or whatever. Which is like good value if you grind all the tickets, which is like good value. I, I think it, it on par it's good value. It's just it's just the system doesn't quite hit the way I think they wanted it to hit. And again, Jared acknowledged this to me himself, where he's like, We thought we were making it fun by giving you guys like a choice. Cause he's basically said that like in the past, they've done these mini events where you know they the old format used to have where it's like win nine games and like every three games you'd get like a spray or like a little mini thing, and then a ninth win you'd get a, a skin. And they're like, we wanted to mix that up and like maybe give people a choice when they get to that ninth win, right? It's like, okay, well, I won nine games. Rather than just being locked into getting this one skin, we can pick which one we want. So that's where the like ticket idea came from. But I think the problem is that people ended up feel like people at the moment feel a bit just FOMO where they're like, I'm, I, you're, you're letting me buy one of four skins, but I want all the, f now you've presented four to me. I kind of want them all right. And you're showing me that like, I can only get one of them when I play that. That's a bit lame. So unfortunately, I think the psychology of it has, has hit a bit off the mark of what they wanted it. But so you, have you not kind of paid any attention to any any of the other aspects? You don't know any no other. Is there anything else? Is it is it uh, Yeti Hunter and the May Snowball event? Yeah, it is. I don't know. Like <laughs> yeah, I was excited. I they released the Halloween event, which was really cool, and then like they just didn't. What was the Christmas event? I don't know. I feel like everything revolves around skins now, and it's a lot less like fun new game modes and funny little things to do. Uh, maybe I'm missing out on them. I don't know. Maybe it's, you know, I'm, I'm just bored with all of this. But, like, back in the day when they released, when there were new events, it was really exciting to play them. It was really fun. And the Halloween event was really fun. I think that was really cool. But uh, this one is just about skins, and you can't even unlock all the skins. And I was like, all right, I guess whatever. I'm just going to queue up Malga and ruin Cloudy's day or something. I don't know. It's just like... <laughs> Well, unfortunately, I do think. I, that's hope, just... I hope he sees this. I hope he sees this. <laughs> uh, probably he's too busy grinding his Winston right now. But maybe someone will tell him that Bogo was shit talking him on the podcast. <laughs> um, that's usually how these things go. Usually, someone comes in the chat and be like, "Did you know that Bogo was shit talking you?" And then he'd be like, "What?" Um, yeah, they'll be like, "What? What are you talking about?" Uh, I do think that is the world we live in at the moment of like with the with the live service and the and the free to play. It is a lot about the skins, and there isn't a lot about the substance of the events per se like i also like i've literally spent zero time playing any of the other modes because i mean we've all played them before if you've if you've been playing a watch since a watch one you've played all the snowball various versions to death there's nothing maybe for the new players i'd love to hear you guys how you're finding it like are you enjoying these modes playing them for the first time probably like we did once upon a time but i do think for the og players is like there's not been anything particularly great uh, I guess the Hero Masteries are coming out, which could be interesting for the people who are interested in those. But uh, yeah, Sam, how do you feel? Like, Do you feel like they need to be putting out some cool new events or is it fine? Events in so, – so from a Mindplex perspective, believe it or not, like our events were what made – like they didn't put us on the map, but like they were a big deal. Like people love Halloween. They love Christmas. So, I, you know, if this one didn't hit the way they wanted it to, as long as they're, they are they understand and they're, like, trying to do new stuff, like this new Halloween and stuff, it doesn't even have to be anything crazy. Just something fun to get in the spirit. It's, it's the – it's the, the goal is to create the, the, the soul, if you will, of the holiday spirit, which is what makes it fun. Otherwise, it'd just be another time of year, right? It's, it's really how people can act with each other that brings life to all these fun things. So, you know um, – I think in general, like the, the holiday events are are just super important across any game, and I, I think it would be fun to to go in and, and hop in and check them out. I just haven't been incentivized to for some reason. I can't really tell you why. It's not because I'm maybe maybe it was the PVE stuff waiting this year for for that PVE. I, I don't know what it is, but you know, I I, I wish I could give a good answer. Uh, I just have not been in tune to really doing it. I guess I, I don't know. There hasn't been a, a reason for me to. Yeah, like Warzone fair. and stuff, for example, sorry to cut you off, but no, you like one thing Warzone did is they, they put like a literal Grinch into the game, right? It's like the main game and you had to stay. Listen, it, it was a, it was so annoying on Caldera um, to be running away from like the Grinch that like he could kill you and like take your cash or it was just, you know, a lot going on. Um, 
I wonder if Overwatch could ever do something like that. I mean, I, but... Fortnite and Warzone just keep adding really silly stuff. I wish we had silly stuff. I don't know. I kind of do. Even though I, 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 we have some silly stuff, but like it's so much less. Obviously, it's not. It's like comparing comparing apples and oranges. But um, I don't know. I I feel like back in the day, Watch was sillier. And I feel like a lot of games right now really put emphasis, like a lot, a lot of focus on the events, especially Fortnite. I know it's not comparable, but like, like the Grinch, that would be awesome. That would be fun having some fun stuff. Oh, the One Punch Man event was awesome. I want more events like that, collaborations. That would be fun. I don't know. That's my opinion. I want things to be a little bit sillier. I feel like we're so focused on the the grind and everything to be balanced. Like just add Lucio killing stuff with his ultimate. Why not? It's fucking it's funny. I don't know. They did it with Diva. Diva Remake is annoying, but it's fucking funny. It's so funny when it happens. It's like hilarious, right? Just do the same thing with other characters. It'd be funny, right? Uh, Reinhardt one-shotting with Shudder. That's also always funny. I think it's always funny. I wish we had more funny stuff. I like do that. solo slam people a lot and try yeah, to get shocked. funny. Them. It's so it funny. Is, it is funny. It's funny. Just add more like, funny Especially stuff. a Mercy player. Like, you know that they're sitting there screaming. They're like, oh, my God, he's going to boom. Yeah, it's not so funny. You're not flying it's so away. Funny. I swatted. Yeah, yeah good one. <laughs> Because a lot of things are just like, just DPS them and kill them. I just, I want to kill stuff with Lucio B. That'll be fun. You just drop from the top, get a triple. And you know what? There was so a time in the game where they were really doing a lot of changes like that, wasn't there? It was like, experimental was, stuff. Wasn't there something? Did they add that to an experimental? What, yeah, it was an experimental. They had a creator exactly. patch. It was, it, was, it was during creator patches. I remember they mm. had like the Hanzo was bounce. Echo who did that? What? Did what? Sorry. Did Echo Flex, because was he the one that suggested to, because uh, I forget ah. who the Lucio players, maybe it was Frogger. You know Frogger remember. would be ri riding on the top of Icon Wall. I don't know. Like beating on like the joke or something. It was uh, in one of those creator patches. Yeah, yeah. It was like insta kill with the beat. It was really funny because we also had a tournament with it. It was really yeah. funny. To oh, watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 People, yeah. I don't know. It was funny. I want more funny stuff like that. I don't know. It's hilarious. They I should bring be, it back. At this point, with especially with the league gone now, like I, I think that I think they should especially given how well Fortnite's done with stuff like that. Screw it and do it, guys. Just add go you know? silly, bro. Go Screw it, do it. That's yeah. an old saying we used to have here in Kentucky for the, on the dive team, just to get over our fear. You never know what's coming next. You just go out there, top of the board. Screw it and do it, and then you probably smack. But you know, screw it and do it. That was the saying. You know, get after it. Make things silly. Yeah, and again, it is one of these things where like our competitive nature fights against the desire for more, mm -hmm. for more silly things. But these are, I think, the most memorable moments. Sometimes they miss, and we got. I guess in our you know, to, to point the finger at us a little bit, we got to be a bit kinder when they, if they were to try silly things and yeah, not overreact because we sometimes do like, you know, they tried Necrotic Orb and we kind of lost our shit for, for a bit when they had the Moira. I mean, that was stupid. That was, that was, that was just stupid. Dumb. That that's not silly, silly at all. That was just Well, stupid. that's the fine line. And that's what I mean though. The line between what is just stupid and what is actually stupid enough to be fun is a thin one until you experiment. Fair. That's that's just a have an audience. Science. Just have a like a, a a judge, like four judges that can judge if a change is silly or not. Like Frogger, me, you know, you know, why not Sumito, and then one more silly guy. I'm, SK. I'm good with that. Yeah, good four with four that. silly guys, and then you go through them. It's like yes, that is confirmed silly. Just add it to the game. You know who would be great. absolutely great for that? What I think I think you'd have to be on it, Boger, because you're yeah. you're a silly guy. You're a silly guy. I I, I think Flats would be a great grandpa <laughs> on it. Emong, imagine Emong on that, right? Like, you know, be like, yeah, that's silly, you know, and he'd find like, he'd be like the positive spin on it, you know, and then he just, I, I feel like Emong would be great for that too. I feel like yeah. Flats, Emong, Boger, wow, it's all tank players. You know what? Frogger, you guys Frogger, fun, add Frogger. Away. Well, yeah, but Frogger. we gotta give some love to the tank players because you guys have, you guys have been that's miserable. True. What if you yeah. get to choose the silly stuff, Boger? True, true, true. That would be funny. Oh, there you That'll go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, here, tank here players, are, they do have the yeah. best sense of humor in Overwatch. That's Am I true. wrong? That's true. I agree. <laughs> Yeah. Not it's not at all a biased discussion player. we're having here. Not at all a biased discussion. And I'm not a tank player. I'm giving it to him, right? I'm giving it to him. Okay. Well, I mean, I mean, to the to, to back. I I agree. I think more silly, fun things are are always welcome. And 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 these kind. I think the more creative left field approaches are what we're kind of get, getting at here, where it's like you know the, the Lucio beat drop. They kind of reward players in a way that's not necessarily broken, but it kind of is is it incentivizes a bit more. Doing something that could be a bit stupid and might risk their own life, but hey, when it pays off, it pays off good. And I think that's the kind of the theme of a lot of these changes. Um, but going back to the Winter Wonderland, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think we have a new Winter Map skin either, right? There's not like there's not a map that's now I think, all. Is I think there a, map? a lot of I think a lot of maps have added like Christmas decorations instead of having right. like one skin. 
I feel like I feel like I've been seeing a lot of Christmas decorations in a lot of maps. <laughs> I know if it's every map, but I've seen it in most maps, like Christmas trees, Christmas lights, and stuff. So I don't know. I'm sure somebody knows, but I've seen Christmas decorations. I don't think one map is like Christmassy. Right. They should have made a festive Toronto, like nighttime with snow and just trees. That would have been so good. Yeah. Well, there is there. I, I think oh, he has a scarf now, right? I think the statue on the outside. I remember, he has a scarf now, like and like maybe oh, some little lighting around him. Like he has like a little. But you're right. Like we didn't get. I guess we didn't get like that dedicated because that used to be the other part. I'm trying to think about like you know why these events perhaps hit differently before because we used to have this like well some map is gonna get a big winter reskin right like when we got like uh King's Row. We got Blizzard World, where it's like, oh, it's all wintry and it looks really great. So, yeah, I'm just trying. To, I'm trying to think out loud of like what it is that's maybe not hitting quite the same. It could just be we're nostalgizing and it it never was that good. But it, I I agree with you guys' sentiment that like nothing has really felt super festive about this particular Winter Wonderland. Even more so than like you know, I think the October one was still good. Like the Halloween one still felt. There was like a theme of the Halloween and the Diablo event, like you know that 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 works. Like Diablo is a good collaboration to bring into a to a scary theme because you know it's like a it's a horror -y kind of game or it's a dark themed game. So I mean, is there anything else you guys want to add before we, uh, this leads us to like concluding thoughts and like what we want to see them do in the future? But anything you want to add on this relative topic? You think there's gonna be something on Christmas Day? Like I remember they used to give us loot boxes back in the day. You think we get something this year? No. No, they no, gave us they gave us so. they gave us they one gave us free emote. No, they gave us one free like uh charm. Weapon charm. Yeah, like a awesome. weapon charm. Epic. I love it. Yeah, I mm. I'm not going to get get go too deep in that. I did I did laugh about that when I saw it on my like when I logged in and saw it on stream. I was like this is kind of silly. But you know what? It's fine. I'm not going to go too hard on them for that one. Instead, I guess I'll just ask you guys, you know, like obviously season 8 has felt as, as Boger, I think, pointed out at the start of the stream, like a bit of a placeholder season, like a kind of, we're waiting for season nine because we want to see the comp changes and that's what everyone's kind of excited for. But is there anything that we can do in season eight that, that could make it a bit more fun and exciting? Is it just like, well, we maybe we changed Malga a little bit or is there maybe some cool collaboration that could turn this around for us? Like, what do you guys think you want to see from the rest of the season. I'll go to Boger first. Boger, what do you want to see from the rest of the season? Buy the battle pass, insta-lock Malga before they nerf him, climb as much as you can. That is the that is the most fun thing you can do. And uh, for the rest of the season, what I want, I want uh, Malga nerfs probably, and I want support nerfs. I'm looking at you, Baptiste and Kiriko and uh, maybe Lari. I feel like these characters need a little bit of nerfs. But uh, outside of that, I don't know. I think uh, everyone's just waiting for the new competitive season. And I don't know what else they could add, realistically add to this season. Because uh, Christmas is coming up and New Year's and stuff. And yeah, I don't know. Support nerfs, Malga nerf, maybe some other buffs. Maybe buff Winston. I'm joking, don't buff Winston. <laughs> don't touch him. But yeah, We already got opinion. a buff, actually. You already got a buff. I, it didn't really change much because Malga just kills him. Like, who cares? <laughs> Before I go to Sam on this one, this is a good chance to plug that I, I, I've i decided we're going to do another rank gauntlet before the end of this season. Because I thought, you know, this is going to be like a really, it's going to be quite a boring season. There's not a lot going on. Once season nine comes in, everyone's going to hard grind comp. So like, let's do, let's do another event. I haven't organized one of these big streamer events for a while. So I expect all you guys to participate in some form. I'll DM you. And we're going to make so, if you guys are listening right now, whether or not right now on Twitch or you're listening on the YouTube or the podcast services later in the future... You can sign up for the Rangol and play with and against these guys. Come on down. We're going to do it in the latter half of January. So it's going to be on three Sundays from the 21st, the 28th, and then the 4th of February. So I'm going to, uh, this time, uh, tell me what you guys think. I'm going to make, I've made a slight change to the format. We're going to do captains. So we're going to be like maybe four to six captains, and they're going to assemble teams of three. And over those three weekends, or each, each of their members are going to do a run, and they're going to try and total their points. And then we're going to have one team come out on top victorious. Uh, so I, I need to assemble some captains and then I need some team members. So I'll, I'll hit you guys up about that, but <laughs> trying to mix it up, trying to make it a little bit fun. We'll see what happens. And we'll, we'll find some good cause to, to donate the money to as well. Maybe we'll give again to the team with whatever their charity of choice is. Uh, last time, if, if you remember those who watched Boger donated the money to CST's family for, uh, the tragedy they were going through. I won't go too much into it just because it was, uh, obviously a very traumatic time, but it was a nice gesture that Boger did there. So... Um, 
Samito, talk to me about what you want to do for the rest of the season. What would you like to see? I, you know, I think this is kind of it. Uh, I, not every season's a home run. Sometimes, you know, money ball, base it, right? Um, I guess this one's a base it. And again, like, I do think Wild is OP. I, I just think their order of operations is wrong for it to be pay to win, in my opinion. I, I, I am totally fine with the hero coming out being broken in quick play for two weeks. That's fine. Let people have their fun. Let people do what they want. But when it comes into comp, it can't override everything to the degree that it is now. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, go buy the battle pass, and uh, if you want to have fun and play Mauga and you just overwhelm everything, and he's definitely got, he, he's really weird for those of you who want to like learn him at home. It, it's you know the first learning curve will jump your value up enormously, and then after that, it's very very minor high skill ceiling changes or it's like oh i'm gonna play exactly five meters away to kind of bait the cage fight duel and like the there is a bit of the, the that mind game that the boger mentioned earlier especially when they both have ults because you don't want to get caught in it right it, it's like it it's almost like the inverse of shatter because there's no shield but he's putting a shield down on you instead of like oh he's dropping his shield to shatter so that was a cool little dynamic they had that is the one part of the mild mirror that i think is actually like brain power um other than that i hope everybody enjoys the holidays and uh, get your Mercy skins, get your Christmas skins, I guess. And people really are into that. I think that's the direction Overwatch is going. And, uh, yeah, best of luck. Nice. I like it. The little Malga tips there as well. Oh, by the way, people are asking, you can sign up via the Discord. So if you head to my Discord server, there's a whole gauntlet section. So sign if you want to sign up for the rank gauntlet, head over there. It's a very easy process. Yeetle, take us out. What is your concluding thoughts? What are you kind of looking forward to? Uh, in terms of what could come for the rest of this season? Um, it's probably not anything going to happen the rest of the season, but uh, big mid-season balance changes, that'd be cool. You know, always shake it up. Otherwise, yeah, I'm not really expecting much. Move on to next season, you know? Yeah, um, man, that's, that's depressing. That is a depressing <laughs> I'm having fun, I mean. Yeah, I'm yeah, having I mean, a bit of fun. You're enjoying the Mago Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. If only my Q times were a little bit faster, but otherwise, yeah, I'm, right. I'm having a good time. It's just so annoying. Like, once I start getting to top 20, top 10, and Q times are like 20 minutes, I'm like, yeah. Dude, I play like, I'm trying to get my 50 wins. I haven't gotten my 50 wins this season because I started really? playing when MAGA came out. Yeah, I still haven't gotten it. It's terrible. Poor old. Yeah, that, that's just like I was saying to chat earlier, it's like the one benefit of playing tank is the fast Q time. So, like, now that's gone. So. I guess, yeah. I guess eventually people will get tired of playing Malga. I mean, especially if he gets nerfed. Maybe not. I mean, if he doesn't get nerfed, people will just keep grinding the Malga because, like, potentially, as you guys are all spreading the propaganda, it's potential free SR. But we'll see what happens. Uh, I, I think I think the the thing they do with these seasons, to be fair, they always have like some surprise somewhere in there. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's a collab of some sort coming. We know Hero Mastery is coming. They'll have a balance patch. Maybe they'll have some more mini event lined up. You know, like uh some lover watchy thing or you know some another like you know like a diablo type game so i, I think they might keep something interesting in the sleeves so i, I hope that we'll get to see that I, I agree with you guys you know malga nerfs would be good um but yeah there's not necessarily anything that we can directly point out we know the comp rework is coming so i guess we're all just waiting and uh hopefully they can still keep this season entertaining and hope of nothing else they've kind of learned a few things from the various debacles right don't don't put mercy skins after the fucking holiday. Point one and b point two. Uh, don't do the ticket systems and give people FOMO. Find a better way to do it. So I think they've already learned a few things there, and maybe they're a little bit lessons on hero balance releases as well. So that's it from my end. Is there anything else you guys want to say before I let you get going? No. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Yeah, exactly. Actually, yeah, everyone we're listening. I hope you guys holidays, have a yeah. have a good time, man. I hope you guys all have a, a good holiday season. For me Thanks. and the Group Up podcast here, we'll, I think we got one more episode for the end of the year, and I'm going to try and do a summary episode of, like, 2023. So we'll we'll see you one more time. But if I don't, happy holidays. And to you guys, if I don't see you, happy holidays, fellas. Enjoy you your time. You literally see me. Happy holidays. I will literally That's true. You were, in Boger in is literally going to be here. flying to SPB. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going again? Yeah, I'm going again. Yeah, go yeah. Again. awesome. I'm going to go again. again. All right, happy holidays. But for guys. the rest Thanks. of you guys, I hope to see you soon and have a great rest of your year. And thank you so Thanks. much for joining me. Please show these guys some love. And from us Bye. now, peace out. Bye.